What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since Rob has been here. And here's Rob. Rob is here. And we're going to go over the entire Phyrexia All Will Be One set. And we're going to review it. And uh, so here's the thing. I have not played a lot of Standard recently. Uh, I've mostly taken a step back from competitive magic. I, I play a lot of cube. I like doing limited things. Uh, I keep up with modern and pioneer and things like that. But I, you know, as far as standard, I'm not super up to date, but Rob apparently is, which is great. Uh, so to be clear, we're not going to rate these cards for limited and we're not going to rate them for constructed. We're just going to talk about them. We're going to talk about them. We're going to give our thoughts we're going to say, you know, this card seems kind of cool. Maybe it could do this. Maybe it could do that. Maybe it could fit here. Uh, and then we're going to say whether we like it or not, basically. But there's not going to be any hard hard and fast scale, like 1 through 5 or 1 through 10 or something. Because um, that's just, it's kind of arbitrary. Um, so, yeah. How's that sound? You, you, you good at that? I mean, I got to be honest with you. I, I have literally... A I have a book here that we did that I wrote ratings for all these cards. That was... <laughs> That was not necessary. No, no, that's good. I was just kidding. That was just a joke I was telling. Like, we're totally going to do that. I have only numbers. I have no comments. Okay, hold on. We're going to have to... We're going to have to pause this real quick. Oh, no, what happened? (laughs) This is... (laughs) Okay. All right. Number one. Against all odds. And, you know, do we need to say, like, casting costs and stuff? I don't think so, right? I I don't think we're going to run through them fast enough that they can't be seen in red, maybe? That's what I'm thinking too. It's going to be on the screen for at least 20 seconds. You get to see what it is. It's it's very high def. A lot of these card, all of these card images, I guess, were very high def when I downloaded them. I'm really impressed. Uh, the size of these card files is is larger than usual. And good on Wizards for, for putting these up here. Sorcery, choose one or both. Exile target artifact or creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So you're, it's a blink effect. Uh, return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. I think it's pretty interesting, right? <clears throat> it does a lot. It, it's modal. Modal's great, right? I, I like Especially when you can cool. choose both, right? Like, I think modal shines when you can actually, they're like, you know what? Choose one or choose all of them, whatever you want to do. Like, that's kind of no, cool. Think this, you know what? This actually is a good start because I saw four mana, white, modal, And I was thinking it was going to be trash. So I wish it was an instant. I think blink spells are at their best when they're instants, obviously. You know, you can do it in response to like something you can, you know, but being able to blink like a Thrag Tusk or like a Cloud Blazer or something, and then like also get a three mana card back. This seems good in like a white cube deck where you're like, you get back like a Blade Splicer from your graveyard, but also blink like, Blink your Restoration Angel, and then that that blinks something. No, I, I guess that's redundant, but you get the point. There's tons of things you can blink. Yeah, <laughs> like, cool card, but right now, like four mana. Even though it is a cool card and it's modal, and you could choose both, but four mana is a lot. There's a ton of competition. That's where all the heavy hitters are right now. Yeah, the, um, the Restoration Angel comparison is good though because you, you get a, that's a four mana three four that blinks something. This is a three mana creature theoretically that blinks something, right? So in theory, like it's almost the creature you're getting black back. If you, if you look at it that way, that's kind of doing the blinking. So it's basically a four mana. It's a four mana card that can blink something. Yeah. And now that I think about it, it's interesting to evaluate. Recommission is already in standard. So recommission costs two mana um, and can do the same thing as the second mode. Obviously can't do the, the first one. Um, but again, sorcery speed, that's tough. So, yeah, I think my only reservation is sorcery speed, but I, I, this is an interesting card, like getting back a metal worker or something in cube. Like, I think a lot of my, my evaluations are going to be skewed towards cube because I love cube, but, um, yeah, I don't know. Does this like, does this have any place in standard right now? No. Okay. Annex century. Three mana for a Phyrexian Cleric. It's a one four with Toxic one. So for those who don't know, Toxic is the new mechanic. Basically, it's like Poison, only instead of dealing damage, de- dealing Poison counters equal to the power, it deals Poison counters equal to the Toxic number. So this attacks for one. If you pump it for six power, if it, if it attacks for seven, they still get one Toxic. So they're only getting one Poison counter, no matter no matter no matter its power. When Annex Century enters the battlefield, exile a creature or an artifact and opponent controls with mana value three or less until it leaves the battlefield. So this is just basically like an upgraded field marshal, right? 
I think this card's pretty solid. I I don't maybe field, as we go field through marshal, it, field. What's that card called? No, you're talking uh I like banisher priest, right? Well, yeah, but it's the one three. three. What's the one three one? I'm gonna find out. Know. Don't well while okay. while you look. I don't I maybe maybe as we get through this more I'll feel better about toxic, but like that just you don't, seems you're so not high on toxic right now. No. 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 Am I thinking nope. fiend? I think I'm thinking fiend slayer. That's what I was thinking. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, I think the only limitation here is the mana value three or less, right? Like, if this is a one four for three without toxic, like, it's kind of fine. I mean, toxic just seems like it's kind of just a bonus, right? Or toughness is very relevant in standard right now, though. I will I say that. These are typically one threes or two twos. So one four is kind of a new, it's a kind of a new variation on that. Yeah. I mean, it seems solid. I mean, I the, think it's good. I mean, yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, it, it removes something and... I mean, if toxic exists, which I'm sure it will, then also, it seems pretty good. Worth noting based on like, you know, it's reminding me this, this art is reminding me particularly, uh, this set has really, really unsettling art. Like some of it is generally like unsettling and it gives me matrix. Uh, if, if the matrix and HR Geiger had a baby, that's, that's where the art kind of sits. Who? <laughs> HR Geiger. Not unfamiliar. No idea. Uh, if you, if you're familiar with the movie Alien or Aliens, uh, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot of a lot of H.R. Geiger art in those movies. If you Google H.R. Geiger, you'd be like, oh yeah, totally, I know who this is. We'll do that later. A Apostle of Invasion, six mana for a Phyrexian Angel. It's a four four flyer. All right, so already we got limited stats here. Corrupted. Mm. So corrupted is like metal metal craft, uh, where instead of encrypting three artifacts, your opponent has to have three poison counters and then, then it does something. So as long as an opponent has three or more poison counters, Apostle of Invasion has double strike. I mean, this is really sick and limited. Uh, one thing I've noticed that a lot of the corrupted cards don't give poison counters. So you want like a combination of toxic creatures and then corrupted creatures that take advantage of those. Yeah, this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing, I right? It's it, I don't, it's unexcited. Yeah, I'll I'll take it in limited for sure every single time because it's a four four flyer. Uh, that's an eight four flyer if if they get some poison. But you know, it's not gonna. It's never gonna be in a. No one's sleeving that card up in their constructed decks. I will say this. I I'm kind of interested to see if we see a card that is an instant or a sorcery that just gives a poison counter. Uh well, I guess I guess during this set review we'll find out, won't we? So we got Basilica Shepherd, five mana for a three three flyer. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create two one one mites, Phyrexian mites. They are artifact creatures with toxic one, and they can't block. These are interesting. Also, like it's funny because now we have like poison, toxic, infect. Like infect is interesting because whenever it deals damage to a creature, that creature gets negative one negative one counters. But to toxic creatures don't do that. You know what I mean? So like now I have all these different types of poison counter distributions and I have to remember like what it does to the player, what it does to the creature. I mean, it's not hard, but it's just getting a little, it's a lot of, a lot of terminal corrupted, toxic, poison, infect. It's like, it's a lot. It's magic 2023. It's like, it's like they're, they're like, they're churning out sets so quickly. The design space is filling so quickly that it's like, okay, now we're just, we're just running rough shot all over these, these terms. But I mean, mm -hmm. this is like a, this is like a, it, this runs you of Geist Honored Monk. Do you remember that card? Yeah. Or like Cloud Goat Ranger, you know, three, three that makes two one ones. It's so funny that you, <clears throat> you could see the difference between us and, you know, when we really play a lot, because when I see this card, I think of Angel of Invention. So <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Where I'm like, Hey, remember Lorwyn 20 years ago, this runs yeah. of Cloud Goat Ranger. Yeah. It's, it's basically five power for five mana. I mean, it's not terrible, but. Again, it's uh, for common. This is actually surprisingly good. I would have thought this was an uncommon for sure. Yeah. Bladed Ambassador. Two mana for a 3-1. It enters the battlefield with an oil counter on it. Okay. Remove an oil counter from Bladed Ambassador. Bladed Ambassador gets indestructible. Okay. So 
I made that face because it's funny. There was there's a card, there's a land that makes oil counters or like it puts an oil counter on something. And by itself, that land didn't make any sense. I was like, what the hell? This doesn't do any, this doesn't mean anything. Like, because I didn't, like it was out of context. And I just saw this land and I'm like, what the fuck's an oil counter? Where's the rules? Where's the reminder text? What is this? You know? Yeah, I mean, this is, um, again, we're like five cards in and we have something new. Uh, it's long line of two mana, three ones in white that have the ability to protect itself. Uh, yes, that's very, that's very true. This one doesn't require like discarding a card for it or paying yeah. for life. This is just removing an oil counter. And I assume there's going to be ways to put oil counters on it. Like that land I mentioned. So, I mean, it's sad because oil an oil counter is such a niche thing. It's so specific to this set that like, it makes this card hard to find a home outside of like this standard yeah. format or like that limited format, which is yeah, always frustrating. It's got to be proliferate or oil or, or cards from this set only, right? Oil now. or bust, yeah. Yeah. Hard to catch something oily. Good call. Good call, Nathan. Good call. <laughs> you can never catch me. That's the, you know, the oiled guy from Family Guy? Oh, you're. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charge of the Mites. Three mana for an instant. Choose one. Charge of the Might steals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to a creature or a Planeswalker. Or create two 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Mites. So this is your typical, like, three mana for two 1-1 one, one tokens, but it also deals damage. So, like, the more of these you have, the better the first mode gets, you know? Yep. I like this card, actually. I think this is pretty good. I, I think instant speed making dudes is always been something that can, you know, show its head in a format, so... I actually think this is pretty good. I do too. And it shocks me like how much ver like the versatility makes the card so much better, right? Like if this was just like, I, I could see this card being three mana, create two one, one Phyrexian might tokens. That's it. But the yeah. fact that you, you can also just deal, if I have like six creatures and I want to just kill your guy, it's also a removal spell. Yeah. Like the, the modality of it is so impressive to me. Like, I, I think it's so cool. Um, there are and it, like, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go. I was gonna say there's a ton of there's a ton of uh, creatures in standard, and there's a lot of battlefields that are just gummed up in standard, and um, you're playing planeswalkers behind it, and it's just so hard to get through. But the fact that you can go to planeswalkers with this is actually very interesting. I actually think this could very well um, be playable. Yeah, they've definitely uh, increased the amount of planeswalker removal that they've put in sets. Like this, and like nowadays, they'll just tack planeswalker onto any removal spell, which is really kind of sweet. Because like, it's an un, it's a, it's a cool experience to open a planeswalker in limited, and it's a kind of a, a feel bad experience to play against a planeswalker in limited, where you're like, oh, okay, cool, I guess I just lose this game. So like, it's kind of cool to like have cards that just like, okay, cool, I just have, you know, some, uh, some common removal that I can just toss at a planeswalker so yeah complete devotion two mana for an instant target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn if that creature has toxic draw a card plus two plus two my phone is my alarm is going off I, I shut it off what did you say about plus two plus two you said plus one plus one no I didn't I would never say that run it back run it back uh, no, we don't have to do all that. You could just oh. trust me. So it's, very it's interesting. This, this card also says target creature you control, which is a very interesting distinction because if, if not, you could easily at the, at the end of your opponent's turn, target one of their toxic creatures to just draw a card. Cycle. And honestly, like, why not? That sounds like it would be fine. I think this is actually a pretty good limited card. Uh, if anytime this thing's anything, anytime this thing cycles and is also a plus two plus two trick, like I think you're coming up ahead. I think that's really good. Absolutely. But again, like I, I feel like the distinction to only be able to target your own guys is kind of weird, and I feel like it just opens up a lot more options to just be like, oh, oh shoot, I'm stuck on lands. I'll target your toxic guy at the end of your turn to try to draw a land. Like that just seems easy, and it doesn't seem like it would be really overpowered. So, yeah. You know, I mean, again, this is a limited card, obviously, but. It's always neat to see those designs. Yep. C Crawling Chorus. One mana for a Phyrexian Horror. And it's a 1-1. One, one, and it's absolutely horrendous uh, visually. 
Toxic 1. And when Crawling Chorus dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature token with 1. And this creature can't block. So this is your basic hunted... Uh, what's that guy's name? What? Hunted Witness. Yes, Hunted Witness or like... Uh, you know, there's there's tons of... The Doom Traveler, there's tons of 1-1s one, that make another... Make that set's default 1-1 one, one token. And this is just that one in this set, which is totally fine. Yep. If, if there's a Sacrifice deck, then it becomes... Solid. Yeah, I think the worst part of this card is actually just uh, having to look at it because Jesus Christ, <laughs> like f absolutely I, horrendous. I think at first look, you look at this. I know we don't want to spend like so much time on this. Stuff, no, it's but fine. When you look at this, it's like, oh my God, that art is really cool, right? It, but it then sure I'm like, is. The more I look at it, I'm like, it feels like everything is rounded and it's in a triangle form and I don't like it. That's what gets Rob. Rob thinks this is great art, but the geometry really, really throws him. I think it's, he doesn't like the shapes. It's not that it's actually, it's not that it's actually terrifying and creepy. Also, the art is great. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's well done and it's supposed to be creepy and it's, and, and, and Michael just, Michael Walsh just nails it out of the park. So this is great. Duelist haunt of, us. what's that? Someone in the chat said the shapes haunt us. <laughs> You know what, man? This art's this art's a little weird and all, but the fucking thing that gets me is the circles. <laughs> Duelist of Deep Faith. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Toxic one. As long as it's your turn, Duelist of Deep Faith has first strike. So, I do think Toxic is actually going to play quite a role in this format because there's a lot of creatures with Toxic. Yeah. Like, you can just stick Toxic one on creatures. and It's not as bad as Infect, right? Because they're not taking two, three poison counters at a time. But... It does seem like it'll add up if this creature gets through, right? Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't think it's any good. It's, it's okay. It's good in uh, limited. That's it. I don't think you're going to win the game with toxic, but I think you're right. I agree with you. Uh, it really depends on what kind of corrupted creatures there are that are constructed playable. Because you know, I don't think getting three poison counters is going to be difficult. Maybe you're not winning the game with the creatures, but I, I, I think getting three is probably super easy to do. It would be cool to see like a big tournament live and watch like somebody get big, beat down. What's a big tournament live? What the hell is that? I don't know. Something that the actual magic uh, Twitch streams and watch somebody just like top deck rip a proliferate spell to win a game or something in a bad spot. Is, that would be sweet. Is that a thing? Do they have like live like tournaments and stuff? Not anymore. I was just, I'm hopeful. That sounds weird. Alesh Norn, Mother of Machines, five mana for a Phyrexian Praetor. We all knew. She's a 4-7. We all knew. She has Vigilance. We all knew. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So your triggers trigger twice. This is so many so many instances of the word trigger. Uh, permanents entering the battlefield don't cause abilities of permanents your opponents control to trigger. This card triggers me. So it's a panharmonicon, right? Right. But it's also, it shuts off their triggers. What does okay. that? That's really good. Uh, Hushbringer? Doesn't Hushbringer do yours too, though? It shuts off all the triggers, right? Fair, yeah, yeah. I don't think, is there opponent ones? There's gotta be, right? I don't right? think there's one. Either. There might not be. Maybe this is the first. I don't know, man. The, the same amount of magic cards came out in 2022 that have existed previously. So who knows? Maybe it's there. Maybe it's not. You never know. I mean, this is really good, right? If this wasn't a 4-7, I wouldn't... Cons oh, so you're saying the 4-7 does make it good. Got it. Got it, Nathan. Yeah, I think this card's good. Uh, I have no idea. Like, this reminds me of Vorinclex, right? Like, the stats are great for the cost. It has two abilities that are broad enough that, like, they can just... Uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they can just shut things off coincidentally like not even deliberately right like same yeah. with vorinclex with like oh i'll play vorinclex he's a big fat six six but like it you know now your planeswalkers are worse you know like even if i'm not deliberately trying to use it against a strategy like just having it kind of invalidates certain things it's just kind of a card that like inconveniences you this i yeah I mean, I'm an ETB guy, so I think this card is really good. Uh, so am I. I love, I love Blinken and I love ETBs, man. 
Also, this looks like Alesh Norn is on Broadway and she's doing her, her Broadway show. And these yeah. are the Alesh Norn dancers on the side. Beautiful. That's what I, that's what I think. Yeah. Context is huge. The, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. You have to know the context. Otherwise you're like, what's her, what's her motivation really? What's, what's keeping her, what's letting her do what she wants to do. You know, the eternal wanderer, six mana for a five loyalty planeswalker. This is a rare. So you can tell she's still okay. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each combat. Okay. Exile up to one target creature or artifact. I do like how a lot of abilities in the set are letting you do artifact or creature. That's yeah. that's nice to have that kind of variety. Uh, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of that player's next end step. So that's very Vensory, isn't it? Isn't that the same as like... Isn't that like yeah, the Venser, Venser the, show, the Sojourner's ability? Yeah, so, and I, now that I'm, you know, I have seen this card, but I didn't really read into all these cards too much, but you can blink something on the other side too. That's actually interesting. Oh, so it's very flicker wispy. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yes. So defensive or offensive? Yeah. That's not bad. Uh, zero for zero loyalty, create a 2 2 white samurai token with double strike. That's really good. good. So that's very good. Costs her nothing. <laughs> Uh, and then you get a four, essentially a four power samurai. That's actually really sweet. Um, and then negative four for each player, choose a creature that player controls. Each player sacrifices all creatures they control, not chosen this way. So basically you're choosing one and then they kill the rest. Yeah, but that's still ridiculous, right? I mean, you keep the body after it. You're, it's a six mana planeswalker that can come down on a gummed up standard board and literally minus. And even if you throw this away, you get like a four or a five for one. You can. Um, yeah, and so the other thing I'm noticing is that like only one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer each combat, but you get to also make a guy each combat, right? So like they attack with one guy, you're always going to have enough blockers to protect her. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I think this, this card seems kind of cool. Good. Like yeah. it seems like it, it's definitely a sweet control card, but it's also got like a nice kind of build around aspect with the plus one where uh, it also exiles tokens, right? You can plus one to exile their token forever. There's a, there's a lot of, uh, yeah, that, that's true too. There's a ton of tokens, um, around standard. I was going to say there, there's a, a lot of standard decks that, uh, board into the, um, oh my God, the six mana card that exiles graveyards. Vorinclex? Enchantment. What's that? Vorinclex? No. <laughs> that's not the six mana card. Uh, farewell. It, it, it's a lot of, there's a lot of cards in standard that board into farewell and they are permanent. In oh, the, yeah, the modal, like the modal Wrath of God. Yeah. yeah. So the fact that you can, you know, the format allows you to be a creature deck and, you know, you can build around this card, use it offensively with your good ETBs, um, defensively uh, in order to get rid of things or get through blockers. And then on top of that, it can come down late and just be a reset button. This card seems very good. Yeah, like I like that you can negative for her the turn she comes into play and she still survives. Yeah. Plus, like, like Nathan said, like you can choose their like their Lana or Elf, right? And that like, oh, cool, you have a four, four, a five, five, and a one, one. You keep the one, one. I just got rid of, you know, your two biggest guys. Yeah, yeah. This card seems good. I don't. I, I like this. I think six mana is a bit high for planeswalkers, but it's still kind of cool. I like all the abilities on it. I was just gonna say the the. I don't think we say that much about six mana planeswalkers. They may have good abilities and they may be cool, but that doesn't mean they're playable. But this right. this seems very playable. Flens flensing raptor. I'm gonna look up flensing. I I, I don't know what that means. Let me know. I, yeah, flens. Uh, the the present participle of flensing slice the skin or fat from a carcass, especially that of a whale. To Yeesh. strip the to strip just to strip the skin or fat from a carcass is to flense. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, okay, so it's a flensing raptor. That's that's pleasant. Toxic one, three mana for a two two flyer. So it's your basic, it's your two two flyer for three in the set with the set's ability. When it enters the battlefield, another creature gets with toxic gets plus one plus one and gains flying until end of turn. So that's kind of neat. It's kind of like helping you get a, a poison counter in. Yep. This is good. Okay. Yeah, it's great. I would play it in the wood. 
yeah, this is this is a great limited card. I mean, this is great limited card. Yeah, flaying the 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 skin of the fat of whales is actually what Wizards of the Coast is trying to do. So that's perfect for that's really on brand for their marketing strategy as well. So Gold Warden's Helm. Three mana for an equipment. Uh four mirrored in. This is another ability in the set. When when an ability, when an equipment with four mirrored in enters the battlefield, create a two two rebel. Uh, and then you just attach the equipment to it. So it's basically like it's a it's a mirrored inversion of living weapon, right? Like this is the 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 more wholesome side of living weapon, where all the what it, wasn't there another equipment ability that put a creature into play, or was that just like something that happened in like Streets of New Capenna on certain things? There like, didn't they have citizens? That, there were definitely cards that that made that they attached themselves. I can't remember if it was a specific ability though. Yeah, I, I thought it was, but I, I could totally be wrong. Uh, but this is just equipped creature gets plus O plus one. So it's literally just a two, three for three with an equipment that sticks around, basically. I, I love this design. Like, I love equipment that have creatures that come into play and then the equipment just sticks around if the creature dies and goes on something else. Like, that. I, that's super efficient to me. Yeah, I, I like the ability also. Or, I mean, I like the this style also, but it, this right here, looking at these... It makes that planeswalker better, right? Because you just blink that token away, like you said. Yeah, but I mean, this is obviously not the best version. Like, I mean, there's some. I, I've seen some cool ones at rare in the commander cards. I'm not sure if this is. I'm not sure if there are any cool for Mirrodin card rares in the base set, but I guess we'll find out. So, I was. I wasn't saying that it was bad. I was saying don't. You know, I, I agree that it's good. I like this ability. But oh no, I wasn't. Um, yeah, my my comment wasn't related to what you said. It was just I wanted to clarify that like. This is not one of the better four mirrored and cards you could probably you'll probably see. The three uh, mana two three was not the good one. No, surprisingly, right? Here's yeah. another one: hex gold hover wings, uh, four mana for an equipment four mirrored in, so you're getting a two two equipped creature as flying, and creatures you control that are equipped get plus one plus zero. Oh. So this is a three two flyer for four, already a little better. There's a good reason this is uncommon. Um, and you know, you can re-equip it for three to anything else you want. So this is kind of cool. Like you're already paying four mana for a three, two flyer in limited formats as it is. So yeah. like for this to just leave an equipment lying around that gives your creatures plus one plus oh and flying, like that's pretty good. That's very good and limited. Yep. Yeah. There, there's also certain limited formats where you play like the, the wings cards, right. That are like two mana to equip and then they just get flying. Like sometimes yep. you'll just play those. So they're not wings. Right, like, and this is just this is just that with a guy. So this seems like a, a first pick almost. I don't know about that high, but it's it's good. okay. It's a second. It's a second pick. Four or five. I'd pick it in my top five for sure. Okay, I'm with you. Incisor glider, two mana for a one three flyer. It is corrupted. Uh, whenever this attacks, if an opponent has three or more counters, creatures you control get plus one plus one. Okay. Seems really good okay. and limited. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I'll play a 1-3 flyer for two most of the time. Um, and if I have a pump, like a, a team pump effect that's attached to it for doing something else, that's also fine. But it's common. So, you know, you you probably get a bunch of these. We're going to bounce gliders off each other? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we're just going to bounce gliders off each other. Yeah, that's what the kids are calling it these days. Indoctrination Attendant. 3-4 four for 4 mana. It's a Phyrexian Cleric. It has Toxic 1. Toxic 1 is also easily the most common of the Toxics. When Indoctrination Attendant enters the battlefield, you may return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. Interesting. If you do, create... What? You may return another permanent you control. Oh, okay. If you create a 1-1 one, one Phyrexian Might. Sure. So, basically, you bounce your own permanent and you make a 1-1 one, one Might. That's fine. You can bounce a land. This doesn't actually seem that bad, to be honest with you. You bounce a land. You, I mean, you can bounce your anything with an ETB effect and get it yeah. again. Right, like your Cloud Blazer. <clears throat> I mean, this is a Cloud Blazer. Limited, it's good. Yeah, I think this is fine. Like this is potentially four, four, five, a four, five for four. You know, and you get one has. They both have toxic, so you know you're. It's likely that you'll be getting a poison counter through eventually. Yep. So infested flesh cutter two mana for an equipment the equipped creature gets plus two plus oh to no no surprise here that this is not for mirrodin uh whenever equipped creature attacks create a one one phyrexian might eh, it's whatever 
It's no I good. think plus I think plus two plus O on an equipment in limited is is pretty good. Um and the fact that you're just making a free token. It's nice that the token doesn't have to attack. Because I feel like a lot of times when it's like put up put the creature into play tapped and attacking, in those situations, those creatures are awfully just, often just gonna get jump blocked and die and get killed. All right. All right, I'm an idiot because I just realized you can put this on a creature, attack, trade, put this on the might next turn, and then attack do it with again. The might. Yeah, the might actually enables it would yeah, it enables that loop, the, yeah. the next might. I mean that's because it's an infestation, right? It's an infested flesh cutter. So the infestation that's really is good, spreading. Actually, now that, that's actually really good in my opinion. Right. That's what I mean, like if you have a goblin rabble master and you attack with it, that goblin token is usually just going to get eaten every turn. So like the fact that you can hold your guy back to like do whatever with, or like maybe amass a bunch of little ones or, you know, put the equipment on next turn. Like that does kind of change it. Yeah. For me, it's like, if I play this and I equip it to a creature and you allow me to attack, that means you have to then, even if I have no other creatures, you have to spend a removal spell on the might that I just created, or this will go off every turn and I will attack right. with because it doesn't have power. to connect, right? It just has to it just has to attack. As long as yeah. you turn it sideways, you're good. Yeah. Wow. That's now that I can see it, Mike B really did mess up his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kerwin, appreciate you, buddy. <laughs> All right. So next we have Jawbone Duelist. Is he dueling with Jawbones? He's a 1-1 one, one for 2 with Double Strike and Toxic 1. See, this is interesting. Uh, again, like, every set has a Double Strike creature. Like, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2 in every set. You have, like, Fencing Ace. You have all these, like, 1-1s one, for 2 with Double Strike, and then they kind of integrate the set's ability to them. So that's interesting. This is just Toxic. Well, I mean, this is nice because if he connects twice, you're getting two Poison Counters. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see any use here. 1-1 one, one is not enough. It's too small. That's what she said. Kemba, Ka Enduring. So it's two mana rare. Two mana for 2-2. Two, two. Kemba is a classic Mirrodin uh, cat cat lady, creature, gentleman, friend. I, I didn't I don't know Kemba's gender. Did you Whenever black Kemba out? Yeah, I did. Whenever Kemba, Ka Enduring, or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, attach up to one equipment you control to that creature. Equipped creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And for five, you can create a two-two white cat creature. It seems good. Uh. It's so obvious when cards... I mean, it's a two-two for two at worst, right? If you have an equipment deck, like, you're just getting a free attach. And then it gets plus one, plus one, so it's a three-three for two. And then you can just make cat... Like, there's just so much happening here that it just seems like it's hard to not be good. I don't know. I Just for me, it's like... Equipments historically have been underpowered. So if you have an equipment deck, you're probably not doing much. <laughs> the okay, card but is good. Okay, but what if you're playing this in modern and you play it and then you put you just attach your hammer to it immediately? What is it replacing though? I mean core outfitter. There's core outfitters in those decks, right? No, oh, no, they've long gone from core outfitters. I don't think so. I think there's no, I don't th I think you're wrong. I have, I have not seen a core outfitter in a very long time. I look through those lists regularly. I, I think this seems fine. I don't know. I, I, You know what, buddy? We can agree to disagree. Well, again, I said the card is good. I'm going to hide Rob for a little bit so, he, so we don't have to look at him anymore. Okay, guys? The card is good. Gone. Okay. So, yeah. Well, what's, I mean, like, we, it doesn't have to be for standard. Like, I don't know. Like. I agree with you that, like, you'd have to find the home for it, right? Like, it's got abilities that are very, very niche, and it has to have equipment to, like, do its thing. If there is a legitimate deck that runs multiple equipments, it is because of this card, and that's how good this card is. I'll say that. I think it's good. I like it. And, like, don't forget you're making cats, man. Everybody loves cats, okay? Let's just... Everybody loves cats. I agree. Okay, Rob the Lawbringer. Looks like six mana. Uh, okay, it's a Sphinx and it's a 6-6. Six, six. It has the ability Driving, which I'm not sure what that is. When Rob the Lawbringer enters the stream, target player gets a Whipped Cream. And Rob once made a PPTQ top eight. 
Is this card any good? I don't know. <laughs> What's the rarity? Oh, uh, it's a mythic. You goddamn right it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, is driving really good in this metagame? I don't actually I haven't played a lot of standard, so one thing people don't know about this card, because first off, obviously, you know, it's rare. It's very rare. <clears throat> that art is actually three dimensional. <laughs> yeah, you're the first non planeswalker to have your your portrait come outside of the frame, which is really <laughs> impressive. No, 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 I meant literally three-dimensional. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm it's, it's not a flat card. All right, what's the next card? Fascinating. Le Leonin Lightbringer, three mana for a 3-2. With He's a cat rebel. He has ward two. God, you know what? Let me just express how much I love ward more than hexproof. I love ward. It's like, it's not this insurmountable thing that you can never get past. It just says, this guy's got a little bit of protection. You got to work a little bit harder. And it feels like this guy might survive like one or two more turns than he would otherwise, but he's not Im immortal. You know what I mean? This but as long as he, good, I don't think. That's true, unfortunately. As long as he's equipped, he gets plus one, plus one. Fantastic. More power to him. I mean, honestly, though, for a three, for a three mana three two, this is a lot of stuff. Like he gets a he has ward. If he's equipped, he gets plus one plus one. Like that's quite a few things for a a creature that's already on par stat wise. But you know, there was um, in current standard, there's two mana one three prowess with ward also, but it's just. Eh. Uh, Nathan, I was actually thinking this exact same thing on my drive yesterday. Uh, you say, I hate booster draft. I love cube drafts. Watsy should print cubes. I don't want to see these in my booster packs. I was literally thinking, like, why do we have cards like this? Like, cards like this see very, very, very little play outside of limited, right? Like, there's just so many better options. Like, I can find a rare that does the same thing times 10, right? Like, I, it probably wouldn't even take me that long. But, like, I was just thinking, like, why don't they just print a set that is all the the cube cards. Maybe not like every cube card, but like the uncommons that are like powerful and, and worth worth playing. Like there were like what's there was like a set with Denrova Horror in it that was very enjoyable. It might have been a master's set, but like That's a lot happy. of the master sets are kind of nice. But like I, I don't understand why they don't just lean into this like cube like preference that people have where it's like we don't need a one, one for one that has toxic one. Like no one really it's, it's cute, but it's like, it's, I want to be doing cooler stuff, but I don't know, whatever. Moving on. Manda. What? Moving on. Mandible. Just a shark. Just juice to shark. I never know how to pronounce this word. Just I sure. don't know. Yeah. I'm going to look it up. Or I'm going to pronounce it. Hold on. Justiciar. Okay. What Mandible Justiciar. Two mana for a 2-1 with lifelink. Whenever another artifact enters the battlefield, Mandible Justicar gets just... I literally just said it the wrong way after... Mandible Justiciar gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Art is awesome. Obsession with Mandibles. Um, questionable. Next card. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mirren Bardish, five mana for an equipment with for Mirren. So it's five mana for a two, two that gets plus two, plus one and has vigilance. So it's a four, three vigilance creature for five mana. And then you can re-equip it for four. I'd probably play it in limited. I'd probably play one of them, but that's it really. If, if this was plus two, plus two, it would, it would almost be a, whatchamacallit, right? A four, four vigilance for five. What, what, whatchamacallit? Uh, equipment. The, um... A batter skull? Yes. Except there's no lifelink, but which is kind of a big deal. But Whatever. it's it is interesting how close it is. Yeah, you're right. It's very like close. it's literally Yeah, it you take batter skill, you take away one toughness and lifelink, and you know, it's kinda it's very similar. I mean you can't bounce it either, but you know. All right, I, I see more. what you're saying. Mondrak glory dominus. So dominuses are a cycle. There's a dominus in every color. And this is a four mana four four. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, twice that many tokens 
are created instead. So now we have, in addition to Panharmonicon, we have Parallel Lives. Um, what was the other one? The, the other, it's the white one, right? Anointed Procession. Anointed Procession, yeah. Those are expensive and cards. Too. They, yeah, that's right. Because Commander. Uh, yeah. One Phyrexian Phyrexian. Sacrifice two other artifacts and or creatures. Put an indestructible counter on Mondrak Glory Dominus. So for three mana, you can just put an indestructible counter on this. It's interesting. You know, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the Defilers from the most from the other sets that we just. Some of those see play though. The red one sees play. Where? So okay, so here's the thing. Every week, I go through all of the Magic Online deck lists from uh, Modern, Pioneer, and Legacy. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's probably like three that, three pages worth that go up a day and I look through all of them just to see what new cards are being played. Um, so it's like the 5-0 leagues, it's the preliminaries, and it's like the, the, the qualifiers that has the top 32 yeah. players for the qualifiers with decks they played. And like you can see like the red defiler and some like creep in sometimes, things like that. Like I'm not saying it's in a tier one deck, right? Like I'm not saying it's like played in, uh, you but know, it shows, a, a, it shows up, right? It's like I've seen it played before. I mean, is this, this is like, it's just like a really, like this, this one specifically feels like commandery, right? Like, unless there's like a Celestia tokens deck in standard or like a Boros tokens deck. I was going to say, so my problem with this is we're at a day where four mana for a four, four that can become indestructible still doesn't beat, you know, a four mana four five with death touch that gains you two life when you draw a card. <laughs> Is that a card? Book. That sounds really good. Yes, that is a card. Hmm, wow. But if... But that's I worth mean, like 20, 20 bucks, huh? If you can keep this around and it, you're... I like tokens. I so. like tokens. <laughs> I like tokens. <laughs> it could be good. It could be great. He does I mean, like tokens, folks. It's got great stats. It could be great. I don't know. Like, again, like, this is a build around. Like, this isn't a card that I just play and win the game on the spot, right? Like, I need to have two other artifacts or creatures to give it indestructible. Uh, I have to have, I have to make tokens after I play this to take advantage of its first ability. You know, this is a card that, like, I'm sure commander players get super juiced about because it's, like, just in another, it's anointed procession number three, right? But, seems okay. I mean, it's, it's, it seems like it could be great or, it, yes, I agree with you. A, or it's going to be a really expensive commander card. It could be a contender is really what we're, where we're at here. Yep. Norn's Wellspring. Whenever a creature you control dies, scry one and put an oil counter on Norn's Wellspring. One and a tap, remove two oil counters from Norn's Wellspring to draw a card. I need to see more of the set to know how good this is, but it looks right. like it could be pretty good. I mean, this strikes me as your your maze, maze mine tome, your treasure map, like that kind of card for the set. Your reckoner bank buster, um, your two mana artifact that draws you a card. Yeah, sometimes. but everything everything you mentioned re does not rely on anything else in order to activate in this. Does. Right, that's my point. I think this is a little worse than those. Like, I can't just put this in a control deck and draw like three cards off of it over three turns. Like, I have to have creatures, um, and they have to die for me to do this. Like, I have Although to lose I, two creatures to draw one card. I I do like the fact that um it gives all of your creatures the extra text of scry one when they die though. That's true. And draw half a card when they die, right? So, I mean, it's not terrible. But again, like, a lot of these cards don't seem great in a vacuum. They really yeah. have to have an environment, like, built around them for them to be at their best. And, like, yeah. if your opponent plays Wrath of God and you top deck this, like, that's, you're like, okay, great. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just missed out on four counters. I feel terrible, you know? Two cards drawn and... Four scries. It's all over now. Yeah, four scries and seven years ago. And oh, Orthodoxy Enforcer. Four mana for a two four with vigilance. It gets plus two plus oh as long as you control two or more artifacts. That doesn't seem hard. So I mean this is just a 
I, I feel like this could consistently be a four four vigilant for four. I I agree with you, but I still think that's terrible. Oh, it's not great, but I mean, in limited, I'll play it. Fair. I've played a two four ox before in limited, so this is just four four vigilant ox. And look at you. What does that even mean? I just wanted everyone to look at you. Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Ossification. Two mana for an enchantment. Enchant a basic land you control. This is interesting because this is like chain to the rocks. And they don't do... What are you doing? You okay? No, I'm laughing. <laughs> I'm laughing because the Twitch feed is obviously slow, right? Right. So... Guys, I'm sorry. I, see... I, I didn't mean for Rob to call you guys slow. You're Every... <laughs> perfectly adequate. Everything I see is seconds old, right? But when you did the look at me, I'm the captain now. We both at this, well, not at the same time, but as soon as you finished your little eye thing, I did it too. And I had no idea that you did it. So, it was so he did it independently, but at the same time. It's like when I'm looking at the moon and I'm like, I wonder if Rob is looking at the same moon. You no, know? Good. Sorry. So... When Ossification enters the battlefield, exile target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. This seems really good for two mana. This is really freaking good. Wow. Yeah, this is just like journey to nowhere, but that it can hit planeswalkers, right? It's um chain of the rocks, but planeswalkers. Right. So but journey to nowhere costs two mana. I guess you have to have a basic land, right? Like that's that's interesting because they put that on here, but that is kind of a limitation. So if you have a five color deck with like one basic land in it, you can't play this card, um, which is neat. That's like an interesting restriction. Um, that being yeah. said, like it's not easy to kill lands, like basic lands. So like you're still going to have to rely on enchantment removal most of the time if you want to get your guy back. But there's no casting restriction. Like, it doesn't hit only creatures that cost two or less. Like, this seems really good. Um, Mono White is a deck in standard. It's very strong, and it just got better because this card is really good. I feel like Mono White's been really strong for, like, 20 years now. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Phyrexian Vindicator. This card... Oh, God. So one of my favorite tropes in like media and movies and books and stuff is the like the the evil clone doppelganger trope. Let me see what's the I, I always forget the name of it. Hold on. Uh, it's called the evil counterpart trope, uh, where like you have an exact mirror version of the hero, right? Uh, so like Flash and Reverse Flash, you know, Superman and Bizarro. Spider-Man and Venom, like that kind of like where it's like you look at one and you're like, wow, that's like the, the mirror image of this, but like an evil, evilized version. Darkwing Duck and Nega Duck, you know, that kind oh of stuff. Oh my God, Darkwing Duck. So <laughs> Phyrexian Vindicator is just a white Phyrexian Obliterator. Five, five flyer. It's white, 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 white. If damage would be dealt to it, prevent that damage. When damage is prevented, it deals that much damage to any other target. Could this be a white card? Did you say, could it be, or should it, what did you say? Should it, should it be a white should card? It? I don't know, but I feel like the color pie is not sure. accurately represented in this set. You know? Art seems really good, but again, mono white, you know? What, you're, you're saying like this is a good addition to the mono white deck? It, maybe. I mean, A 5-5 five, five flyer be. that you just can't really deal damage to? Like, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, again, it may be, it, it could be really good, but there's a lot of stuff in the five mana slot. We see a lot of really strong four, five, six mana cards, and it's like, they just don't see play. But, I, I mean, the card is clearly busted looking. Yeah, I, I like it. I think the design is cool. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Whether this ever sees play is yet to be determined. I still think Phyrexian Obliterator is a stronger card. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And I think I think that's the reason this is toned down a little bit because Phyrexian Obliterator is kind of scary in every format it's in, really, and that's why it's still like a forty dollar card, you know. Right. It looks good, uh, but I don't feel as scared attacking into it as Obliterator. I I agree with that completely. Yeah. 
It does have flying too, which means like the the ability, the damage prevention ability is not even going to be as relevant because it's just not going to get blocked by as many things. So like it feels like mostly a defense ability where I'm going to block your guy with it so you can't attack me. But that's the last yeah. thing I want to be doing with my 5-5 five, five flyer is blocking. So it's kind of an, it's, it's an awkward kind of tension where it's like the ability favors blocking, but the entire card favors attacking, right? Seems good. It does. It seems good, but I, I don't know if it's going to... It's no obliterator, that's for sure. Planar Disruption. Two mana. Enchant Artifact, Creature, or Planeswalker. The permanent can't attack or block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. See, again, this is a card that, like, it's a typical, like, pacifism, which is a, a limited staple, right? Like, you're always going to pick a pacifism. But this can hit artifacts or Planeswalkers and shut off their activated abilities. Yeah, I can see this as actually as, as a playable card. Oh, for sure. Standard. Like, yeah. removal spells, like, I want them to hit planeswalkers, and I want them to hit creatures, and this does both for two mana. And, like, I'm not, I can play I'm it on not. your Birds of Paradise and shut off its its mana abilities? Like, I mean, like, that's a lot of power. Yeah, now that I'm looking at it, one interaction that makes this card really good, and again, I'm never good with sets and rotations... Um, but the three mana saga that allows you to discard a card and then put a, something that costs two mana or less into play without paying its mana cost, that seems really busted with this. Wait, say that again. Which card? I can't think of the name. Three mana saga. When you, the first chapter is you get to search for a planes and put it in mm -hmm. your hand. The second one, you get to discard a card. If you do, you can re return a permanent, uh, restoration of a ganjo is what it is. That this is really busted. To you said the restoration of ganja? Yes. Got it. Got it. Yep. Yeah. This is good. I think this card is very good. I'm I'm surprised because, well, Jedi Django said it's a juiced up arrest, but arrest couldn't hit planeswalkers. It just hits creatures, right? So like, I mean, you know, it's an arrest that costs one less, but also hits artifacts and planeswalkers, which seems really good. Yeah. This I'm like is I'm like su too. yeah I'm like shocked at how good this card seems. Yeah, I don't know. That's, I, mean, I feel like I'm, I almost feel like I'm missing something. Like, wait, what's the trick? Seems that's good. A, I think we're going to see yeah. a lot. I don't know. That's good. Plated Onslaught. Five mana for uh, an instant. Affinity for artifacts. Okay. Creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. Okay. This is like your standard combat trick in the set. You know, it's probably going to cost two to four mana at, at any given time, which is not a bad rate, you know? But usually I want them to get vigilance or trample or something else. But you know, this is if you if you're paying this for playing this for two mana, like that's probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm not excited by it, but I you know it's it's like a necessary evil in a set. So porcelain zealot four mana for a two three at the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. If that creature has toxic, instead it gets plus two plus two. And it's a two three. I mean, pretty solid for limited. Yeah, if for you sure. have like a couple toxic creatures, giving them plus two plus two each turn seems fine. Like making your mites three threes is pretty big. Agreed. Yeah, and you don't even have to attack with this guy. You could just make my mite a three three attack you. So yep. you can either chump block it or get a poison counter. Like yeah, this is this is a great this card's great limited. Yep, and I think it's 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 interesting because like once we focus on the limited applications of a card, you can kind of tell we don't see its value in constructed. You know what I mean? So like by default, if we're talking about a card's application in limited, we've already said it's not good in constructed. We're saying it without saying it, right? Sure. Because if we're talking about its constructed application, usually it's going to be also pretty good in limited. Not always, but most a lot of the times. Resistance Reunited. Two mana for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Equipped creatures gain indestructible until end of turn. I like to draw one better than one earlier. I always want to draw one. Yep, me too. That's all I want to do in Magic Together. Unless I could draw two. That's fair. But if you let me draw three, golden. Sinew Dancer. Hold me closer, send you dance. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1. Uh, it taps a creature for 4 mana, but if your opponent is corrupted, you can tap for 1 mana instead. God, look how look how much work we have to do to tap creatures nowadays. 
that's a lot of text just to tap dude they used to make you just tap a creature for like one or two mana now it's like four mana but if you got three poison counters we'll, we'll give you the discounted rate what um how do you say um sinew backwards oh are you talking about the weenus <laughs> Yes, why did you, I'm like, what, what made you notice that? You're like, hold on. What is this backwards? I honestly don't know. That makes me think Rob reads every word and then reads the word backwards just to see if it's anything funny. And he's like, uh, yes, I got one. This one says weenus. Okay, hold on. I'm going to get him. Hey, uh, read sinew backwards. It's like, like when I'm like, what is this? What sound do you think um, weenus would make? Right? It's like that. Well, you know, Dancer backwards is Recknad, so this is a Recknad Weenus <laughs> if you read the whole name backwards. So that is at minimum that is at minimum a rare if that was a I card. Think, I think that's the best part of the card, to be honest with you. So <laughs> Recknad Weenus would well, definitely be a, a black rare it's, card. It's <laughs> it's also a southern name as well. Recknad <laughs> Weenus get in the house. It's it does it all, really. It does it all. Boy. Skrelv Skrelv Deflector Mite. I like that this is like a little legendary mite. Like this guy's this guy's got some he's he's got some clout in the mite community, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 with Toxic 1. It can't block, so it's a mite. But for one Phyrexian mana and a tap, you can choose a color. Another creature you control gains Toxic 1 and Hexproof from that color until the end of turn. It can't be blocked by creatures of that color this turn. So this is just like a, a Toxic Giver of Runes, a Toxic Mother of Runes, a Toxic... Which is pretty good, right? That's It's not bad. This it's legendary good. too, so you don't, like, you're like, oh shoot, I drew two of my Skrull, Skrelves. I mean, it seems like it could be good. I think it's got a lot of good things that white decks like. I, I can see this even like even as a one of in like a deck that has Giver of Runes in it or something, right? Like you just put a one of, and then are you you just reading chat? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. it's you're doing rough. I'm like watching you laugh, and I'm like he's he's gone now. I'm trying to keep it together for you. <laughs> yeah, no, this so card seems good. Someone said Skrelv comes after Skrelevin. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's how numbers work, though, you know? It might be good. Wow, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Oh, uh, shit. I, I also don't know if I said Deflector Might, because this is a Defector. Wait, a Defector Might? Is this Might? Is this a good Might? Is this like he's on the good side? Is he a Mirrodin Might? He's eating something red. I like this guy. This guy's got Moxie. I like him. I like this guy a lot, man. This is my favorite creature in the set now because this dude's adorable now that I know he's a Mirren. Skrelv's Hive. Oh, this is his little high. These are his little babies. Two mana for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose a life and create a 1 1 colorless Phyrexian Might. This is just Bitter Blossom. This is Might Blossom. This is so sick. This card's cool. I like this card a lot. I also like Skrelv. I want to build the Skrelv deck with Skrelv and Skrelv's Hive. This is I'm I'm I really like this card. I haven't seen this card yet. This is really cool. Oh, I love that you haven't seen. I I did see this one, but I I, I I love it. I think this card's super cool. It makes every turn you're getting an artifact. Right? We've seen artifact matters. Obviously, the more toxic you get, the better. Oh, yeah, um, that's true. It makes artifact tokens a return. Good call. That is relevant. Pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, I like this card a lot. I would love to play with this card. Also, I mean, I would put this in the cube, too. This is cool. Like, make a 1-1 every turn with, a, like, an artifact creature every turn. Yeah, I like it. Swooping Lookout. One mana for a Vigilance Flying 1-2. What's the next card? <laughs> Artist well, why is this? Can someone explain to me why this is uncommon? Is there a line of text that they forgot to put on here? It's Hold on, it's maybe? hard to tell. What? No, that's all flavor text. <clears throat> all right, see you later. 
Vanish into Eternity, three mana. This spell costs three more to cast if it targets a creature. So six mana? Exile a non-land permanent. So six That's... mana to get rid of a creature, three mana to get rid of what? Like a... Planeswalker, enchantment. enchantment, Saga. I don't know. That's, that is an Artifact. enchantment, Rob. You just said enchantment twice, basically. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> I don't know. Three mana to do that seems like a lot. Like, Yeah, I don't know. It this is doesn't instant, seem great. Though. Oh, great. Oh, unossify. <laughs> you can unossify. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Touche. Uh, okay, Veil of Assimilation. Uh, whenever Veil of Assimilation or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, target creature you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains vigilance until end of turn. Okay. Eh? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't get excited over plus one, plus ones. Like, I have to do a thing to get plus one, plus one. Like, uh. White Sun's Twilight. This is also a cycle. Uh, X, white, white. You gain X life. Create X mites. Uh, if X is five or more, destroy all of their creatures. Oh, this is like Mitchell Law. Mitchell. Mitchell Coup. Mitchell Coup. That's what it is. Mitchell Coup. Okay, I was like, yeah, I don't think it came through, whatever you're trying to get across. They, but you got it the second time, right? I did. See, that's all that matters. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? I think this is pretty pretty good. I don't think this is that I mean, good. Really? It's like Marshall Coup. Isn't it just Marshall Coup, but you get mites instead of soldiers? We've already had, there's already cards like this in standard that, that have been in standard recently. What are they? Name one. Uh, there's a there's a black white X one that makes uh, tutus, right? Inklings? Blot out the sky? Yeah, is, that's the same thing, isn't it? But that doesn't Literally destroy all the. Card. Does it? Oh, maybe it is. Hold on. Is Marshall Coup just not a. Is it just not a contender anymore these days? Is it just not good enough? No. Wow. Okay. Blot out the sky. Yeah, blot out the sky. X tapped 2 one way. If X is six or more, destroy all non-creature, non-land permanents. Oh, non-creature. My bad. Yeah, that's not the same. This is a Sorry. wrath of God. I lied. No, it's you not. What? This is seven mana. So is Marshall Coup. Seven okay. mana is to end the game. I think if you're getting five one ones and wiping all the board like that, I think this card's strong. Look, man, I, I don't know. I'm no standard player, okay? But this card seems powerful in a control deck. I don't I don't think this is any good. Okay. Well, you know what? Maybe it's not. I don't know. Yeah. Sound off in the comments below. Let us know if it's any good or if it's just if it's just trash. I'll give you strong, but not good. If it's strong, isn't it good, though? Yeah, no, right? <laughs> this card's strong. It's not good, but it's strong. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? What's gonna What's gonna make it good then? Zealous conviction, one mana for a flash enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one. Uh, if your opponent's corrupted, it gets plus two plus one and first strike. It seems really good and limited, but that's it. I mean, I'll play a trick that's a plus one plus one for one, and this is just an enchantment that sticks on it. And yeah, I mean, this is fine. I would definitely play this if I if I got one. Skeletor is strong. He is bad. <laughs> You know what? That's a good point. That's fair. Oh, we're on the blue cards now. How do you feel about that? I felt like uh, it took us an hour to get through the white ones. This is what I told you. Rob was like, doesn't it take us like three hours to do the whole... I'm like, I don't think so, man. These are long. Jesus. Aspirant's Ascent. One blue until the end of turn. Target creature gets plus one, plus three, and gains flying and toxic. This is a lot of things. Yeah. A good I like these better when they untap. If they if it untaps a creature, I'm on board. I'm like, okay, cool. A little this little juke. Great... You get to ju go ahead. No, you I was say this is a great limited card. That's it. Yes. So also, you know, you know what a thing we do when we, once we realize how long a certain color has taken us, we start speeding up. We're like, all right, let's just go. Let's just rush through all these these junk cards. That's what we do. Yeah, that's my fault. I didn't mean it that way. No, I didn't. That's not your fault. Atmosphere okay, Surgeon. Two mana for a 2-1. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, 
Put an oil counter on him. Remove an oil counter. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. I mean, that's what I'm going to want to activate it anyway. I'm not going to be like, attack, and then they block, and I'm going to be like, in response, give it flying, right? Like, oh, but you can't block a flyer. So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, this reminds me of Haunt Haunted Figment, uh, where if you cast instant or sorcery, it gets unblockable. But I like that it that you can control when um, it's not always you know when you cast the spell. So seems good and limited. I agree. It's a two one for two at worst, Laurie. Like the stats are good. Usually this is like a one one for four, and you're like, okay, great. Blade of Shared Souls, three mana for a four mirrored and equipment. So it's a two two. Whenever it becomes attached to a creature, for as long as Blade of Shared Souls remains attached to it, you may have that creature become a copy of another creature you control. Whenever Blade of becomes attached to a creature, for as long as it's attached. So if I attach it, that's interesting. So this, when this enters the battlefield, the 2-2 two, two is a clone. Yes. You may have that creature become a copy of another creature. It's, it's only you control, though. Which is a strong distinction on clones. I hate it when it's only you control. Are you think you're in the tank? Uh, yeah, no, I'm just I'm just reading it to make sure I understand. So it's it's literally a clone, but if I equip it to a different creature, I can reclone something. Right, that you control. Sure. So if your opponent has a worm coil, you don't get it. That's the only thing that stops me. I think the limitation of only being able to target your creatures is just too high for me. Yeah. Could be good. Could, I mean, look, three mana clone that you can repeatedly clone. I guess not that great. I mean, it, super, it super, Fritz with the, super Fritz with the hot takes. He got that beehive arm. <laughs> he do he do have that beehive arm. It's true. Even the swords are made out of beehives. Yeah, I don't know. This seems good for a clone that can... Like, it's a recurring clone. But the cost for that is that you can only clone your stuff, right? Yeah. I, I'm in the middle on it. Yeah, I agree. If that said uh, becomes a copy of another creature on the battlefield, I'd be like, I'm on board, 100%. I would, like, swap this out of, like... For, like, for, for like Phantasmal Image, even. Because it's, like, sure. one more mana, but you get to reuse it. Multiple clones, yeah. Blue Sun's Twilight. Here's the blue Twilight. Gain control of target creature with mana value X or less. If X is five or more, create a token that's a copy of that creature. That's pretty good. Am I wrong? This seems very good. I think there are a ton of great creatures at two and three mana. Um, so you just, playing... you just steal it, right? Or the 2-2 the two -two from Fable the Mirror Breaker. Paying two mana... And stealing their 2-2 two -two that makes tokens is really good. You can steal their Vorinclex. You can. Or a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but then also, it then it dies. Yeah, and then and it, it, but then it dies, right? Because it's, it's still legendary. Like, this doesn't say that the copy is not legendary. I like it when they say that. This is good, though. This is really good. Yeah, I great, think this card's cool. Sideboard. Yeah, because four mana is what you're usually paying for, like, that... Like, is that, what's the what's the four mana steal a guy that's like, it's four mana, but you steal a guy with converted mana cost three or less. This is close to that, but it scales up very well, right? Like, the later in the game you draw this, the better it gets. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. That's cool. It's cool. Bring the ending. Two mana. Counter target spell unless its controller pays two mana. So it's a quench. Corrupted. Counter that spell instead if its controller has three or more poison counters. So it's a hard counter if they have three poison counters. Also, editorial mistake on this card. The it's in corrupted is incorrect. It should be ITS without an apostrophe. That's interesting. Um, I don't think it's I mean, I guess if there's a if there's a toxic deck that's legit, this is really good. Two mana counter spell. <clears throat> See, I was almost like, I was almost like there was a part of me that was like, is this good an infect? But I think I think two mana is too expensive for infect no, and like not. stubborn. Yeah, there's like tons of cards that are just better than this. But it crossed my mind for a second, you know. As soon as I was like, what decks could take advantage of this being a hard counter at two mana? So Um, I will say though, Jace looks like he's about to drop the beat in this in this art. <laughs> I mean, who's who can say that he's not? You know what I mean? Like Yeah, he's getting ready to bring the hammer down. Let's talk about the Chrome Prowler, all right? He's a 3-2 with Flash. 
Yeah, he costs three mana. That's a Phyrexian cat. But you know what else? When he enters the battlefield, tap a creature an opponent controls. And then you know what else? Here's the next card. It's called Distorted Curiosity. It costs three mana. It's a sorcery. It has corrupted. This Ooh. spell costs two less to cast and an opponent has three or more poison counters and you draw two cards. That's like interesting. You know, once you have one mana draw two cards, like I'm um, I'm on board. Well, that, I'm getting there. You're you're pulling me in here. There were formats, there were limited formats. I can't remember again, I'm not good with sets, but where people would draft the divinations and they'd have like three or four in their deck. Draft the divinations. Also, for yes. those of you guys watching on Twitch right now, definitely be sure to check out HelloFresh. They are a current sponsor of the stream until tonight at 2 a.m. So you have today, if you want to support the channel and get some some sweet meals, you get 21 free meals plus free shipping. And uh, you can use the promo code down below along with the link to check that out. It's a great way to support the channel. Should we show a meal? I don't have a meal with me right now. I, have I didn't one. bring one. Right now? I, I literally can have one in less than eight seconds. <laughs> Do you have like a leftover? I have one in the fridge that, we're, that I'm going to cook later for dinner. Oh, like the bag? Yeah. Yeah, those are pretty look, sweet. I, I wasn't somebody who ever did this before. So when I, I didn't know what to expect. When I opened the first one and I saw literally like all the fresh veggies and all the like the rosemary and stuff, I was like, holy yeah. shit, this is sweet. Dude, that's what, yeah, that's every time it's so satisfying. You get like, you get like a tiny thing that you need, like it has one garlic that you might need and like a little pack of seasoning that it's the exact amount you're going to need. And I'm like, this is so satisfying. The garlic thing is funny you said that because the very first meal we did was the, um, <clears throat> can't remember, but it was one with garlic. And I, for some reason, turned the bag over, uh -huh. had no idea garlic was in there and it fell out. It's the, isn't there, it's like, it was, was it the one that has like the one clove of garlic that, that was the exact amount you needed? That was two. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm it's like, funny. this is like such a small amount, but they just like drop the cloves in there and you're like, all right, sure. I'll take it. Listen, I paid $4 per meal for fresh veggies and meat. Yeah. It was well worth it for sure. That's what we did. Like we got six meals and they were $28 for all six and it was like $5 a meal, which is less than like a Chipotle burrito, you know? By like half, that. actually, yeah, <laughs> like by a significant amount, yeah. But now we're on encroaching mycosynth four mana for an artifact. Non land permanents you control are artifacts in addition to their other types. The same is true for permanent spells you control and non land permanents you own that are not so. Everything is a, it's a real Oprah win for you get an artifact, you get an artifact situation, right? Yeah, this is like a it's this is too a much of a card, right? Yeah, like uh, this is for your for your Memonarch commander deck or some I don't know I don't know what this card is for. Who's the audience here? It even says permanents you control, not your opponent though. So, like the opponent ones, you can use them to like nuke stuff with like ancient grudges and stuff like that. But Ma Magic Marker Studios, Godspeed, buddy. Drive safe. Escaped yeah, experiment. You know what? What'd you say? I was saying, I don't think that there's anything here. It just doesn't. Yeah. It's like, it's too much work for it to even figure out what to do with this card. You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Someone will break. It's a card that's like, either someone's going to break this or it's never going to see play and it's going to be in the dollar bin. Yeah. The 10 cent bin, I guess. Cause the dollar bin is actually decent for a rare these days. Yeah. Two mana, two, one. Escaped Experiment, Phyrexian Beast. Whenever Escaped Experiment attacks, a creature an opponent controls gets negative X, where X is the number of artifacts you control. I'd play it in Limited. Very good in Limited, I think. Very good. Yeah, at the very least, if this guy attacks and it's the only artifact you control, it's negative 1, negative 0. So, it's not yep. nothing. All your mites are, tox are, are artifacts, too. <laughs> Nathan says... Wow, this card with Mycosynth whatever, it was the gives target creature zero power sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you just make all your cards artifacts. And Fair. uh, you know, then you're then you're winning. Experimental augury. Two mana for an instant. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Proliferate. So this is an impulse, but they took one card of the four and then turned it into proliferate. Anticipate, right? Oh, it's just an anticipate with proliferate. 
yep. anticipate with prolifo rate. Yeah, that's that's what it is, right? That's weird. I watched so a Jonah Hill movie last night, and you sounded like Jonah Hill just now when you said that. Was it the Eddie Murphy one? Yes, it was. God, so I had really high hopes for that movie. I have not seen it, but the reviews are not positive. And it makes me so sad because I feel like Netflix has so many good potential movies that end up getting terrible reviews. And I'm like, why, why can't you just make good movies? You have all the, you have the budget, you have the actors. I don't understand Netflix make good movies. You're pretty easy going with expectations. So I you didn't are, expect it's true. it to be great. I thought it was good. It was funny. Okay. I, like I, I won't watch it again, but it, it was funny. Okay. <laughs> You're like, I'm a one and done guy. Is this strictly better than anticipate? Like I use yeah. the term strictly better loose, like very, not, not loosely, the opposite of loosely, very strictly, because I think people miss, misattribute the term strictly better. Um, but yeah, this is just anticipate with proliferate tacked on, which since it's an optional ability, it's never going to be a detriment, right? I was just going to say that the reason that it, it literally is strictly is because proliferate is an option. So yes, it is right. strictly. You, you can choose none and you're in the same position as if you cast anticipate, but you can also benefit from it. Correct. Yeah. This, I, I think this, this, this is good, right? I was going to say this probably, this probably has like 37 different arts too. So you could probably <laughs> find a better looking one than any. I bet it has one because it's a common only mythics have 14 different arts. Unfortunately. Eye of Malkator. You know Malkator? I do not. No, me neither. But this is his eye. So it's three mana for an artifact. When it enters the battlefield, scry two. So you get something out of it. Whenever another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, Eye of Malkator becomes a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian eye artifact creature. Great limited card. Oh, it's a common. Okay, I was like, I was so underwhelmed by it, but then I was like, oh, it's just a common. Got it. It's just like Halcyon Glaze, where it's like, if you play this, if you play a specific card, this becomes a creature. Sure. I will One say, mana. though. Go ahead. Hold on, wait. wait. I will I'm say, gonna... the fact that it doesn't do, a, it, it does something no matter what, right? It right, does you're getting a free scry out of it, right. But if you're, if you're using that Bitter Blossom effect, you're paying three mana for a 4-4 four, four that let you scry too. Yes. We can move on now. Okay. It's also nice because the first time you play another artifact is going to be probably the next turn, which is like, it's not going to have summoning sickness at that point. Right. So it's, it's only going to be relevant on the next turn anyway. So I don't know. Font of progress, one blue for an artifact. When it enters the battle, it enters the battle for the two oil counters, three and a tap target player mills X cards where X is the number of oil counters on Font of Progress. So it's just a, it's an overcosted millstone in terms of its activation because it mills two, but you can start putting oil counters on it. I can see it, it doesn't use the oil counters. So no, I can see not, that would be sad if it did. Cause then you're like, all right, mill you for two, remove two oil counters. All right, well, now it's done. <laughs> But I, I mean, mill mill is a very successful strategy when it exists in limited formats. Correct. Um, and with all, all the proliferate, if you you know if you open this and you you know you you draft one and see a second, that's if you true. Pick two or three of these, um, you could you could really you know with proliferate spells win games. Yeah, you can play like, like experimental augury, like draw a card, put another oil counter on this, mill you for three. Yeah. Especially if you get multiple of these. I mean, is that, yeah. that seems fine. Cause like you just pay the mana late game. Gataxian and anatomist <clears throat> four mana for a two, five. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you may tap it. If you do proliferate, that's interesting. Good limited card. That's it. Yes. hundred percent. Correct. I mean, a two five is a big body for four. You have the ability to not tap it if you need the defender or if you just want to take it. I kind of like that mechanic. It's really elegant. Like, you can you can forego blocking with this creature that's clearly meant to block for a turn and get a cool yeah. ability, right? Like if it says like like if there's a creature that was like a two four for four and it's like when it comes into play, you can tap it if you do draw a card, right? Like it's yep. kind of a neat little cost that's like you you could play it as a spell for the turn it comes into play. Pretty cool. Gataxian Raptor, one four for three, flying. 
it enters the battlefield with three oil counters. Remove an oil counter from Raptor, and it gets plus one, negative one until end of turn. That's really underwhelming. I actually don't think it's that bad because a lot of these in limited you see you have to pay like two mana or a mana. Like you have to eat your turn's resources. This at least contains its own yes. resources. But in the late game, like like that that bird from Kaldheim where it was like, I mean, the mist mist raven or what mist caller or whatever it was. Um, it's caller, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm attacking for four regularly in the late game with that thing. You know, with this guy, I'm like, I can attack for four once and then it's a one four forever. That raptor looks like a shitty pigeon. See? That's correct. Young Blood MTG, thank you for the raid, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. Glistener Seer, one mana for a 0 3. It enters the battlefield with three oil counters on it. You can remove an oil counter to scry one. God, that's underwhelming. Yeah, next. Iker Synthesizer. Two mana for a 1-3. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on Icar Synthesizer. As long as Icar Synthesizer has four or more oil counters on it, it gets plus two, plus O, and can't be blocked. The oil counters are interesting because they don't actually do anything. They're just like, it's just the name of the counter. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know if this is good. I mean, unlimited, obviously. I don't I don't know. It's a lot of work though. It is. I have to it cast is, but four spells. I guess. Ikermore Gauntlet. Oh, is a oh this is this thing is wild. Three mana for an artifact. Planeswalkers you control have zero loyalty ability, proliferate, and minus twelve. Take an extra turn after this one. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose a counter on target permanent. Put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, choose a counter. So, so every you get to time prolifer you, you proliferate once you... To, for one counter, whenever you cast it on creature spell. So you you can you can put more counters on your planeswalkers. Your planeswalkers in. Wow. Yeah, this card's wild, man. This seems really stupid. Plus, like if I have three planeswalkers and I proliferate all of them, like they're all getting plus three, right? Yeah. Like put a counter on this one, this one, this one. Put a counter on this one, this one, this one. Put a counter on this one. Like, like that's. They're all plus three after that. Like that seems kind of crazy. The negative twelve seems kind of it's just high. tacked on. But I think like the 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 zero ability might actually just help. Like you have three planeswalkers, you want. I guess that's a good point. I don't know. Is this overkill? I don't know. It's it's really it's a commander to me. I think. Oh yeah, for sure. I could see that. That permanent, not each. Well. Yeah, the second ability is that permanent. Each. I'm talking about the zero proliferate ability. I'm not talking about the put an additional counter of that kind ability. Jace, seems the it's it seems very, very interesting. Uh, Jace, the perfected mind. Four mana, one of which is Phyrexian, for a five loyalty completed planeswalker. For those who don't know, completed means uh, you can pay one of the mana with life, uh, but if you do, it comes into play with with two fewer loyalty counters for each Phyrexian mana you paid. So if you could play Jace for two colorless, one blue, and two life, and then he's a three mana Planeswalker, basically. Until your next turn, up to one target creature gets negative three, negative zero. So it's very similar to like Jace Friend's Prodigy Flip. Negative two, target player mills three cards. Then if a graveyard has 20 or more or, or more cards in it, you draw three cards. Otherwise, you draw a card. So negative two, you mill them and draw a card. Isn't that like, isn't that the same as like Jace, uh, the Detective Jace? Detective Jace. Detective Jace. What's his name? I forgot his name, dude. There's so many know. Jaces. Architect of Thought. Uh, Unraveler of Secrets. No, that's same Scry thing. 1, draw a card. Oh, it's Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Plus one, target player puts the top two cards of his library into his or graveyard. Draw a card. Isn't that the same ability? This sucks. Uh, oh, this is negative two, I guess. So that's worse. I mean, the, you have the potential to draw three, but I'd much rather have a plus one ability that always lets me draw one. Uh, and then negative X, target player mills three times X cards. So you could play this and mill them for 15 immediately. That's this interesting. 
Yeah, I don't think it's good. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, what does X have to be for it to, for the mill to be relevant and standard, right? So on turn four, let's say like 12 cards are removed from the deck. So they have 48 cards. Um, you play this guy. You divide it by three. I'd say I know, seven 15. is minimum. Yeah, like 15 feels correct. No, probably like 12. Because 12 would be 36. But that's like, like that's like such an it's such an unreasonable number to I don't know. Negative twelve mills thirty six cards. And that's they even that seems low. So I'm unimpressed. Yeah. Malkator's Watcher. One one for two flying vigilance. When it dies, draw a card. I, like I wanna this I wanna emerge this card. I wanna cast a an elder deep fiend off of it. <laughs> or a or a I wretched griff. Back. Draw Mel twice? Yeah, then you draw two. That's right. Meld <laughs> Web Curator. Four mana for a 3-4. When it enters the battlefield, put up to one target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard on top of your library. I don't like it when these cards put them on top of my library. Yeah. Even Is when that you're greedy? Them. Yeah, I'm like, uh, just put it in my hand. I want to draw the card. You know what that is, though? That's like the... That's like human nature, right? It's like, I'll give you 10 grand or you can have what's behind the door probably a basic land that's that's true yeah what but what if the card i draw is better than the instant or sorcery i'm putting on top oh dang it meldweb strider vigilance meldweb strider enters the battlefield with an oil counter on it remove an oil counter from meldweb strider it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn okay so this is a five five or five that needs to be crude but because of its oil counter one time it's a five five I wish it crude. cost three and not five, but Why is it, like, a five, five for five creature is normal. Like that's just a normal rate, but this, I need another creature to crew it. Like you're not that's doing sad. me any favors by giving me one free crew. You little shit. That sucks. Mercurial spell dancer, two mana two one that can't be blocked. When you cast a non creature spell, put an oil counter on it. God, I love an oil counters. Whenever Mercurial Spell Dancer deals combat damage to a player, which it will because it can't be blocked, you may remove two oil counters from it. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy that spell. That's that's speaking to me. This card like, is definitely going to be played a lot. In Vintage Cube, you're just like, attack. Uh, okay, I'll time walk. Double it. This card's dumb. Uh, I want to play Cruel Ultimatum and double it with this. This is really good. This this is definitely going to be played in older formats. This card seems really good. I agree. This card seems really sweet. I am completely on board with this card. I like everything. I, would, I like the fact that it can't be blocked. This is going to my cube. Yeah, this is sweet. Yeah, the can't be blocked. This reminds me of Glint Sleeve Siphoner, where like sure. I have to remove two of its counters, but it has an evasive ability, and then I get a cool bonus when I when I remove two counters. Yeah, this is this card's cool. Yep. That, that might be the best card we've seen. That is the best card we have seen. Yes, I agree. That is a card I'm genuinely excited about. Mesmerizing Doze. Dose. One blue blue for an enchant creature. When it enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature, then proliferate. And it doesn't untap. This is just claustrophobia with so this is like a strictly better claustrophobia, right? Because it's got proliferate. Is this card about the drugs? I don't. It's probably they're all on Halo, bro. You don't know. They're huffing oil counters. <laughs> mind splice apparatus this art is unsettling four yep. mana for a flash artifact at the beginning of your upkeep put an oil counter on it instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast for each oil counter why does this have flash because you could do it on their instep i guess but the upkeep trigger the first trigger because it's it's based <laughs> around instants right instant sorceries sure i don't know but it doesn't do anything. It this card doesn't do anything on its own. I don't. I guess it's because it's in your deck where you're keeping all your. But it's sorceries too, right? So it's not just instants, right? I don't know, man. I don't think it's playable. It's. I. It, no, it's not playable. This is a four mana do nothing. Minor misstep. 
counter target spell with mana value one or less. This card is insane. This card is fantastic. Great against cascade spells. This is really good. It hits everything. It hits everything. Almost. This is, I mean, yeah, it's, this is the, the fixed version of mental misstep and it's, and it's a very good version. So I'm on board. Wait, are you okay? Yes. Is, wait, is mental misstep one or less or one? Mental misstep is one. So this gets zero as well. Mental misstep can't counter like yeah. crashing footfalls or, you know, ancestral yeah. vision. This can, which is super Seems exciting. Good. Yeah, I agree. Prologue to Phyresis. Two mana, each opponent gets a poison counter. Draw a card. There it is. That's the one. That's the one you wanted. Like, I like imagine it. Getting, imagine getting like three and it replaces itself. Imagine getting three of these and you're just like, they just enable your, your corrupted cards, you know? I was just going to say, like, this is a card that, like, if I don't pick a bomb rare or, like, a really high rate removal spell, I'm snap picking this. It just replaces itself. Yeah, it's great. I think this card's cool. I like it. I like it a lot. I, I like it a all. lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Quicksilver Fisher. Five mana for a 4-3 with flying. When Quicksilver Fisher enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. Cool. I like, yeah, loot, loot, loot away. You can loot the hell out of here. Reject Imperfection. Three mana for a counter target spell. If that spell's mana value was three or less, proliferate. See, again, this is just a better, like, cancel, right? Like, it's just a strictly better cancel because it's a counter spell. But you pro proliferate, maybe. Yep. This is, like, the third strictly better card I've seen. So, cool. Better options in standard, though. But still, like, you know. Yeah, for sure. I'm never going to, like, I'm not sleeving this up. Serum Snare, two mana for an instant. Return a non-land permanent to its hand. If that permanent had mana value three or less, proliferate. That's the same card. It's the same card as the previous card. Looks good. Tamio's Immobilizer. Jesus, that's <laughs> this is terrifying. Four mana. Why does she have an immobilizer? How do you get an immobilizer? Who, who, who asked for an immobilizer? <laughs> Why does an immobilizer exist? Why is that a, a proper noun? Tamio is good, right? Why would Tamio need an immobilizer? I don't. I don't know. I don't have the answers to these questions. Four mana. It's an artifact. It enters the battlefield with four oil counters on it. You remove an oil counter. You tap a creature. This is just like tumble magnet, right? This is just a tumble magnet with one more counter for one more mana, and it's blue. This is terrible. I really. Yeah, this is no good. It's, Really? You think this is good for four mana? I mean, Tumble Magnet was playable at three. And but like, that you was can proliferate. There's a lot of proliferate here. What? That was in 1968. <laughs> you know, maybe that's true. I don't know. I don't know. Chad has a great question. What is with the white stuff dripping down? Not a great question. The only answer, the only answer is, is inappropriate, right? So it's, it's a violation of uh, Twitch Terms of Service. Twitch Terms of Service, correct. Tamio's logbook. Tamio's got a lot of shit. She's a hoarder, right? Like Tamio's got a bunch of a bunch of stuff too, and she's got like a notebook. Tamio's journal, you know. She's journal, she's yep. She's a hoarder, dude. All right, so three mana. Draw a card for for six mana and a tap, but it costs one less for each other artifact you control. Not bad. So think of all the mm -hmm. mites. If you play this after you got like five mites down, you're drawing a card for one mana. Good limited card. Yeah, I agree. If it's tech, a slow format. Tech tech or techuthal. Techuthal. <laughs> Come on, man. Get out of here. Techuthal. Inquiry Dominus. Isn't that isn't Techuthal the guy who hacked the Gibson? I don't know, man. I I gotta ask you a question. I know you've done like development stuff. How the uh -huh. hell do they come up with names like this? Uh, development usually does not come, come up with names. Like usually there's a separate narrative world building department that comes up with the names for stuff. How do they come up with names like this? You just make them up really. Okay. And then you want to cross reference them to make sure they don't really exist. Like, you know, that you're not pulling from something, you know, it's just, it's how do you, how do you come up with anything? You know what I mean? Like you just make it up. It's all made up. It's all made up bullshit. Okay. Weenus. What do you want to know? Okay. Techuthal Inquiry Dominus. Four mana for a 3-5 flyer. If you would proliferate, proliferate twice. And then for one 
Phyrexian Phyrexian, remove three counters from among other artifacts, creatures, and planeswalkers you control. And put an indestructible counter on him. It's trash. These don't do anything on their own. They're all just cards that do something if you have other cards that are very specific, right? Yeah. Can we take a uh, quick pause? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Just give me a quick pause. To take a I have to take a phone call. Okay. Sorry. Okay, we're back. Tech you thaw, Inquiry Dominus. It's kind of mad. It does, does nothing for four mana. Got it. Yep. Thrumming Bird, a classic reprint. 1-1 one, one for 2. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. Fits great in the set. The end. Yep. Transplant Theorist. 2-4 four for 4. Whenever it or another artifact enters the battlefield, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. That's pretty good. Oh. That's a good... That's a solid looter. I was excited, and then I realized it was 4, like you said. That's that's expensive. Oh, it's a 2... Yeah, 2 fours for 4. What did you think? It was a 2-4 for 3? Two four for two. One, I wish it was a one three for two with this ability, and it'd be good. See, that's interesting because while that's cheaper, I feel like I get so much less mileage out of a one three on the board. I feel like when I play a two four, it actually it has some play. I could actually do stuff with it. Whereas, like whenever yeah. I feel like I have a one three, it gets outclassed so quickly. Yeah, I get that, but for me, it's the ability more than the body, and then I also. What am I doing with the cards that trigger it that cost three and two in my hand? What aren't you doing with them? Casting them. Fair. And, you know, for two mana, you can put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your library. That's got to count for something, right? I don't think that is ever in the history of Magic 1 anyone a game. I agree with you, and it makes me sad. Trawler Drake, three mana for a zero zero flyer. Trawler Drake enters the battlefield with an oil counter on it, and it gets plus one, plus one for each oil counter on it. Ooh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an oil counter on Trawler Drake. This is interesting. So three mana, one, one flyer. That if gets cast bigger that, every time you cast a non-creature spell. If you cast that draw card proliferate spell, it immediately becomes a three, three flyer. Yeah. Seems pretty good. Okay, is this a thing in like modern with like... No. No way. And... Really? Not a chance. Okay, interesting. That's way too expensive. Three mana for a one, one flyer. Nope. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, we'll see. Unctus Grand <laughs> Metatect. <laughs> Three mana for a 2-4. Other blue creatures you control have, whenever this becomes tapped, draw a card and then discard it. God, they love looting. No one just wants to let you draw a card these days. Kids these days never let you draw any cards. You always got to loot. Other artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one. And for one Phyrexian blue, until the end of turn, target creature you control becomes a blue artifact in addition to its other colors and types. Activate this only as a sorcery. Crash. It's very niche. And like the fact that this is like a legendary artifact creature is it's like this is just a commander card. This is just yeah. a commander card for the people who wanted to play Grand Architect in Commander. Yeah. Unctus's retrofitter. Three mana for a 2-3, Toxic 1. When it enters the battlefield, up to one target creature you control becomes an artifact creature with base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, for as long as this is on the battlefield. That's a strong... That's, I agree. Literally. Like, making a might into a 4-4? Four, four, That's strong. Like, the only problem is that you, like, you're playing this on turn 3, so you'd have to play something on turn 1 or 2 that can really benefit from this. Yeah, but even a 4-4 body in Limited is great late game, so you don't have to play. This, this can be something you draw on turn 7. Oh, yeah, I agree with you. I'm just saying on turn 3 for the expected the expected cost. Yeah, I mean, this is good, right? Like, yeah, this card's sweet. Oh, it also turns an artifact you control. It doesn't even have to be a creature, so that's oh, you're cool. right. Like yeah. you could have like a you know like a courier's bobble or something that like let you draw a card and then it's like sitting there on the board like a mycosynth, uh, like a what's it called the one that like draws you a card and then when it goes to the graveyard you draw another card what's those things called? Mythic bobble? No, no, that doesn't do that. Uh, no, draws a card goes to the graveyard. Iker Wellspring. Oh, it's yeah. like Iker Wellspring. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. Wow, I'm really glad we're on the same page there. Viva Surgeon's Insight. Five mana, draw three cards, proliferate. 
So not strictly better than Jace's Ingenuity because it's a sorcery. But I'd still play this in my limited deck. I would draw three and proliferate for five. I like drawing three. That's the only place I'm playing it, though. Watchful yep. Blister Zoa. Six mana for a 4-4 four, four flyer. It enters the battlefield with an oil counter on it. When it dies, draw cards equal to the number of oil counters on it. Oh, I, I like this. Yeah, you would. So it's a 4-4 four, four for six flying. But when it dies, you draw at least one card unless you've proliferated. What if you proliferate twice? You draw three when this dies? That's that's cool. Uh, I mean, for limited, it's great. That's what I'm saying. I'm not. No oh, one's constructing time. with this. Big but time. I would. I would definitely play this in limited. This is a. This I would windmill slam this guy, and then I would pick up every two mana card that lets you proliferate. Do I think what? Do you think his his tentacles are wet? Wet. Yeah. Like yeah. Oh yeah. He get he gets wet. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we made it to the black cards, buddy. You ready? Ooh. Ambulatory Edifice. Three mana for a 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, you may pay two life. When you do, target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. I remember, the day when I, I, would, I remember the day when I would play a 3-2 for three, and I wouldn't have to pay two life to give a creature negative one, negative one. Really? Uh, what's that? Eye Blights, Eye Blights card? Hold on. There's too I many magic cards. No, not the not the spell. I blight assassin. Two two for three. When it enters the battlefield, target creature or opponent controls gets a negative one, negative one. Yeah, but this is a three two. You're right. I'm. St yeah, you're right. It's totally better now. Okay. Annihilating glare. One mana. As an additional cost, pay four, or sacrifice an artifact or creature. Destroy a target creature or planeswalker. So this is just. Bone shards, except instead of discarding a card, your other option is to pay four, right? Yep, but you can also sack an artifact. Yes. So you can sack. I a think might. this card's this card's great. I think this card's good. Sorcery. There's a lot of history with cards like this, but it's definitely could be playable. In, yeah, I in, mean, in limited, in, I would always take this. Absolutely. Because it's five mana to, to destroy a creature planeswalker at the very least. Anoint with affliction. Two mana for an instant exile target creature if it has mana value three or less. Okay. Exile that creature instead if its controller has three or more poison counters. I don't like the way this is worded. I get it, but I don't like it. Yeah, it's confusing, but I, I understand what it's supposed to mean. Yeah, right. You're saying you can exile a creature with mana value three or less. If you don't have corrupted, but if you do, you can exile any creature. But it says exile that creature instead, and it's like the the verb they're modifying is exile, exile it instead of what you're doing in the first one. But Which you're exiling, exiling it there too, right? Like they're they're modifying the verb and not the subject, right? Like if it said exile any creature instead, if its controller has through, it just feels awkward. It feels awkwardly worded to me. This could be great. I mean, it could be a, it's an instant, it's two mana, it's a smother, but better because it exiles and it, it hits anything later in the game if poison counters are a thing. I wish it hit planeswalkers, but I think that's just like a better eliminate at that point, right? It's just a strictly better eliminate for if with corrupted. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's, this is, this feels like your typical eliminate. This, this is just like your typical um, each set kind of has like a one or two black mana removal spell. That's that's that seems really good. Um, like what was the last one? Cut, cut something. No, cut down is one man, <clears throat> one mana. <laughs> right, but it's like it's it's your it's your uncommon removal spell that's really strong. Where it's like, you know, fi your your combined power and toughness of five or something. Oh, for throat, um, yeah, yeah. Eliminate. Uh, What's the one that was like it's modal? Modal eliminate. Yeah, the modal eliminate. Right, that's the one. Hold on, let's see if I can figure out what that one was. Heart. Life into pieces. Is it heart <laughs> something? I feel like it has heart in it. Heartless act. That's the one I'm talking about. Ah, yes. That is modal. Yeah. Archfiend of the Dross. 6-6 six, six for 4. It's a demon. God, I love demons, man. Look at those tentacles, bro. You think those tentacles are wet? I want to touch them. Touch them, bro. Those things fly like the tentacles probably from uh, uh, Independence Day. You know how those tentacles on those dudes were like I do. Constantly like, I yeah. do. 
Yeah, that's okay. So it's a six six flyer for four. So similar to Desecration Demon, or what was the other one? What was the other good one? I don't know. But you lose Come the on. game if you uh, Abyssal if you... Persecutor. Yeah, Persecutor. That's it. Archfiend of the Dross. So this is gonna have a drawback. Archfiend of the Dross enters the battlefield with four oil counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove an oil counter from it. Then, if it has no oil counters, you lose the game. <laughs> Oh Christ! Whenever a creature in opponent controls dies, its controller loses two. Oh, I was like, I was hoping whenever a, a creature in opponent controls dies, that it would get an oil counter. So like maybe you don't fucking die as quickly. But this this is good, right? I think this is good. Do you really? I do. Cause think about it. It's beginning of upkeep, so you get four turn cycles, four well three attacks, I guess. Then, huh? Yeah. So okay, you play him. The next turn, you remove a counter, then you attack. Next turn, remove a counter attack. Next turn, remove a counter attack. Next turn, remove the fourth counter. Die. You die. So you get three swings with this guy. Like, is the juice worth the squeeze? That's the question, right? There was probably a great joke that could have came in right there, but I don't know. Because, like, you're playing this on turn four. So it's not like they're... In, someone said, uh, Invoke Despair is a card. What does Invoke so Despair do? It's hard to see working. What's the relevant with Invoke Despair? Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two and you draw a card. Yeah, I don't, what's that? I don't get it. This is not it's taking, not taking into account proliferate. That's true, but like I think we're talking about constructed, right? We're talking about a constructed application for this card, right? Sure, sure. I mean, in limited, I'm if I if I can build a proliferate deck with this, I'm definitely playing it. If this is a blue black card, if I if I open this, I'll probably play it in a blue black deck, and I'll just I'll take all the proliferate cards I can get. Invoke you know. despair punishes cards that do, that don't accomplish something on ETB. I mean, that's I don't I don't oh, think there's just, any. You're just saying because they're going to play invoke despair and they're going to make me sacrifice this. I, I mean, mean, sure, but I have I mean that's that's assuming I have no other creatures in play. You could say the same thing for uh, any removal I mean, spell ever. Anything without anything without uh, an ETB effect, which there's plenty of cards that. Don't. Yeah, but I mean, like at that point, if they cast Invoke Despair, like I haven't lost anything by playing this. Like I don't lose the game if this dies. I lose the game if it has no oil counters and that ability triggers. Right, so they can kill it the same way they can kill any creature. That doesn't make this a bad creature because it dies to something. Yeah. Uh, I guess why would you play this when Shieldred exists? I mean. Sure, that's that's the better question, I think. But also, they're two different cards. Yeah, why not both? Yeah, I'm, I don't like boxing myself into be like, there's one four mana black creature in the format, and it's the only one you can play, and no one will ever play anything else. I don't really subscribe to that sort of like rigid deck building, like like where you look at every card in standard or you know whatever format you're looking at and say like this is the playable card at this casting cost. This is the playable card at this. And like, you don't play anything else at those costs. Like, I don't, I don't think standards should be that way. And I don't think, I don't like approaching the game in like in that way. I mean, that's not to say this is going to be like a tier one card, but I mean, I think it's worth looking at outside of like shield or it is four mana. This can't be four mana as well. Yep. Bialis skull dweller. <laughs> that was my nickname in college. Actually. Skull dweller. One mana. But the yeah, they used to call me the Bialis Skull Dweller. What'd you just say? I said Jesus. <laughs> okay, one mana for a one-one Death Touch with Toxic One. This is your standard one-one Death Touch for one, and they added Toxic to it because that's the mechanic in the set. I think that's really good because you you draft like three of these, you're holding down the ground, and you're you're getting to corrupt or whatever it's called. Someone mentioned Fateful Handoff in the chat. What does this card do? Draw cards that go to the Man of Valley Tower artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that permanent. Wow, I really wish this this hit. Um, this is kind of cool, actually. The what turn does it do, Draw cards. It's from Brothers War. Draw cards equal to the mana value of target artifact or creature you control. An opponent gains control of that. So when it has one oil counter, you can be like, all right, I'll draw six. You have this. They go to their upkeep and they die. How, how much does it cost? Four mana. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I would love to play that. That sounds like fun. Is it better than Shield Red? Probably not. Is it fun? Yeah, and that's kind of cool. 
All right. Black We're Sun's it. Twilight. You ready for the Black Sun's Twilight? No doubt. Up. <laughs> no doubt. Okay. These are also um, a play flavor wise on the Zeniths from the original Mirror to Besieged, like Black Sun Zenith, uh, Green Sun Zenith, etc. So you want from the Zenith to the Twilight. Up to one target creature gets negative X, negative X until end of turn. If X is five or more, return a creature card with mana value five or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. I like this card. This. Is yeah, like you get to kill a thing and return a thing. Instant speed. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Especially because like it's again, it's 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 uh it scales well, right? So, you know, on turn three, this is a negative two, negative two. On turn five or six, like you're getting something back from the graveyard and killing their biggest thing. Like, that's cool. I like this card a lot. It's very good. Another really good one. <laughs> All right. Blight Belly Rat. Two mana for a 2 2 with Toxic 1. When Blight Belly Rat dies, proliferate. Go to the next card. I wish you the best, Blight Belly Rat. Bone Picker Scourge. Three mana for a 2 2 flyer with Corrupted. As long as his opponent has three or more poison counters, Bone Picker Scourge has Death Touch and Life Link. Can I tell you, you something that bugs fire? me? It bugs what? me when they say corrupted on every card, and then they tell you that the opponent needs three or more poison counters afterwards. I don't Fair. think you need both. It feels redundant to me. Like, you don't, if you have a set with flashback, you say flashback, and then you have the ability afterwards. Like, here's here's another part that bugs me about that is depending on what the ability is for corrupted, it'll say what you're saying you don't like at the beginning or at the end. So it's not even the same for each of them. Like this could say corrupted bone picker scourge has death touch and lifelink. And I would be like, Oh, so if my opponent has three or more poison counters, this has death touch and lifelink. It's I read one card. Like the, you tell me what corrupted is once and I'm good. Like, yeah, like either that, like take corrupted out. Like, because that it's in a, once you remind me every single time, Keywording it becomes unnecessary. Hmm. Chittering Skitterling. Corrupted. Sacrifice an artifact or creature. Draw a card. Activate only if an opponent has three or more poison counters and only once each turn. Yeah. I mean, this could just say, Corrupted, sack an artifact or creature. Draw a card. Activate only once each turn. And I would know that I can only do this if they have three or more poison counters. The fact that it's a free sack outlet and it's instant speed is pretty nice and limited. Well, it's only a free sack outlet if they have three or more poison counters, though. Or if they're corrupted. Yeah, one or the other. Right. Correct. And they're different, we know. Sure. Yeah. Cruel Grimnark. Six mana for a 5-5 five, five with death touch. When Cruel Grimnark enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. For each opponent who can't, you gain four life. Is that just a big metal dude? Like, if you hit him, is he metal? Yes. Okay. Well, it's, no, it's not an artifact creature, so that's how we know, he's right? Soft tissue? Yeah, he's soft. He's sinewy and soft, yeah. He's yeah. weenus. Yeah, he's like a weenus, right? <laughs> Cut the... <laughs> Rob's dying. That is definitely shaped like a weenus. See, this guy, the Cutthroat Centurion, this guy's metal. This guy's metal AF. Yeah, This is a 2-2 two, two for 3. Sacrifice another artifact or creature. It, get, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. However, only do it once a turn, okay? Just once. Is Nantuko Hus too good? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, wait a minute. Why are we neutering Nantuko Husk? <laughs> we, they keep doing this, too. I don't, I don't understand. Whatever, man. It's too good. It's too good at twice. They should only you can only activate it as a sorcery as well. So, Drivnod Carnage Dominus eight three for five mana. That's a that's a big that's a big body. Uh, this art's really good. I like I I like a lot of the art in this set, even though it makes me cringe a little bit. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So this is kind of like. This is like a reverse Eleshnorn, right? Uh, now your now your leaves the battlefield abilities trigger instead of your enters the battlefield abilities. I haven't seen much um, to make me think that that's really good. 
the fact that you can this is the first one we've seen where you can cast it on curve and make it indestructible immediately. That's yeah. I thought that too. I was just wondering like why this is the first Dominus that doesn't have a one in its indestructible ability. Exile three creature cards from your graveyard. That also doesn't seem that difficult. Nah, but I still don't think this is any good. An A three indestructible. I don't know. I don't I, think it's great. <laughs> it's, yeah. Like so many of these cards feel just like they're like they're made for commander. Like this just feels like it's a commander card that I can build my deck with a bunch of leaves the battlefield abilities, like a bunch of dying triggers. Yeah. And that's fine. It's whatever. Drown in Icker. Two mana. Target creature gets a negative four, negative four until end of turn. Then pro. Oh, it's this a sorcery. Good. Okay. Yeah, this looks oh. good. I wish it was an instant. I was like, is this just better than Grasp in Darkness for black, black? Um, you can't say because it's a sorcery. But negative four, negative four for two mana and proliferate seems very, it's still very good. I just wish this, I, I wish it was five. I wish it killed Shieldred. I love how this card is shit is now phrased as this is a commander card. <laughs> well, I mean, different formats have different, you know, I mean, like different power levels, different expectations of, of what the cards do. Like duress. Okay. One black target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non creature, non land card from it. That player discards that card. This seems really good. Uh, is, is this dude just taking a shit and he's under duress? What is the relevance? He, he's duressed. Give of yourself for completion awaits the cleansed. Yeah. I think he's shitting. He's shitting. So is this constructed limited or whatever? It's more like whatever. Yes. If we start to speak heavily about a card's limited applications, it's probably not constructed worthy. If we talk about how good a card is in constructed, it's likely also decent and limited. Like, but there's no hard and fast. We're just mostly giving our feelings on the cards. Uh, there's plenty of. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Andrew Wolf's right. Where do you think all the Phyrexian oil comes from? This guy's shitting under duress. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. Feed the Infection. Four mana, you draw three cards and lose three life. Corrupted, each opponent who has three or more person counters loses three life. Okay. Did you notice, did you notice this guy's shit is running down these dudes? Hunter does seem a little guilty looking. Uh, he was like... I didn't even notice him. Yeah, I don't know. This there's like this typical like this is like caress Phyrexia's caress or something. C A R E S C. Uh, caress of Phyrexia, five mana. Target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters. Like the the typical like the the black card that like you draw X cards lose that much life for like one mana more than the number of cards you're drawing is is pretty common. Like that's not. It's a sorcery. If this is an instant, I think it'd actually be pretty decent. Like, end of turn, draw three. I'll take three for that, sure. Yeah, Ambition's Cost. It's literally Ambition's Cost, but with Corrupted on it. That's the exact, yeah. Ambition's Cost is you draw three, lose three for four mana. I mean, this just has upside, so it's like a strictly better Ambition's Cost. Fleshless Gladiator. Two, two for two. That's <laughs> uh, funny. I was I was thinking of fleshless gladder being a euphemism, you know, you know, like that's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. And I'm standing two, tall. Two, two, two for two. Return fleshless gladiator from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped, you lose a life. Okay, see you later. Geth Thane of Contracts. Okay. Three mana for a three, four other creatures you control get negative one, negative one. Basically it's basically Daryl or right. You guys remember Daryl or from fallen empires. No, that's yeah. not it. Dang it. Daryl or makes your black spells cost one more. So similar, similar theory where it's like, okay, this is just a, a detrimental effect for my other cards. Uh, Karavec is Karavec is both. Yeah, Caravect is, is both players. Other creatures get negative one, negative one. What's the one where your creatures get negative one, negative one? 
Anyway, for three mana and a tap, return an, a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Activate only as a sorcerer. I guess. Everybody wants you to go back and read the flesh te- or the flesh text. The, 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 the flavor text? The flavor text of Fleshless Gladiator. What she lacks in skin, she makes up in swagger. <laughs> wow. Yes, sure, sure. Certainly. Gulping Scrap Trap. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four. when it enters the battlefield or dies. Proliferate. Two cool. proliferates. Hashtag two proliferates. Infectious Inquiry. Three mana. You draw two cards and lose two life. Each opponent gets a poison counter. Okay. okay, so it's just like, it's your typical black draw two, lose two for three. And then they just yep. stuck a proliferate on there. That's fine. I no, not a proliferate. It's they get a poison counter. Oh, that's right. That's different. That's that's different. You're right. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's the black version of the blue card that we saw. What's the blue card? The the two mana draw card. They get a poison get a counter. poison counter? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 All right. Oh, look at this. Look at this bad boy. Bad boys. Caramonix, the Rat King. A 3-3 three, three for 3. Toxic 1. Other rats you control have Toxic 1. When Car- Carumonix enters the battlefield, look at the top 5 cards of your library. You may reveal any number of rat cards from among them and put the revealed cards into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Why don't you just put this in the commander set? Why is this here? I don't know, but I will say, I think it's pronounced Caramonix and Caramonix sounds like a 80s synth band or something. Yeah, that was my, yeah, my band Caramonix. Yeah, we were in that was yeah, that was me in the 80s. Jesus. Yeah. Necrogen Communion, two mana, enchanted creature you control. Enchanted creature has toxic two. When it dies, return it to the battlefield under your control. It, interesting. I want this to have flash. That'd be busted. Well, not busted, but I don't know. I, don't like I can see idea. this. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, I, don't know. I don't know. Necrosquito. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, four mana for a zero, zero flyer. Doing good. Enters the battlefield with two oil counters. It gets plus one, plus one for each oil counter. Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard, put an oil counter on Necrosquito. So this is that that typical like bloat fly kind of ability where it's like it gets a counter every time something dies. Is it's trash. Thing? Bloat fly? No. Did I make that up? Yes. Yeah, there's no cards called bloat fly. Maybe I'm just thinking about Fallout, you know? Yeah, this is this is not great. Nimrazor Paladin. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four with Toxic 2. When it enters the battlefield, return a creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. Good and limited. Cool. That seems really good and limited. That, that seems great. Offer immortality. Two mana. Target creature gains indestructible until end of turn and death touch. Gains both of those. That's a great trick and limited. That's great. I agree. I would play it. Pestilent Siphoner. Two mana for a 1-1 one, one flying toxic one. I probably, I mean, I definitely play this in limited. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It's basically a two-two flyer w- because of the toxic one. You know what I mean? Like, anyway. Oh, because yeah, ten counters. Right, because you only need ten, so you're kind of dealing two damage with every one poison counter. I had no Phyrexian, idea these cards were in this set. By the way, just so you know, I, I'm learning right you, now. You had no idea what? I had no idea these next two cards were in this set. I didn't know this card was in the set. I don't know what the next one is because you're you're looking at the image gallery. I'm just looking at it when it pops up. I did not know Phyrexian Arena was in the set, but that's pretty sweet. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and you lose a life. I, I love it. Phyrexian Arena is a classic. It's a great card. Is I'm there a place for reprinted. Also, what if you go turn three Phyrexian Arena, turn four Shield Red, and then you just gain two every time you draw a card instead of... I, I love this card. I have a mono black commander deck, and I love this card, but I hate the fact that they put this in standard. Because it's good? Black has way too much already. I, I just. Plus, it's like, it, this is a. Enchantments are not easy to deal with 
typically, right? Like, I mean, this is like, you're going to play this on turn three and it's just going to stick around because very few people are going to have main deck enchantment removal. Like, you already have Shieldred. You already have Invoke Despair. I mean, black is just freaking loaded. This is crazy. That card, someone in chat said, I've always hated Phyrexian Arena and I think it's I think it's bad. I have played this card in a lot of formats and it's never been bad. I agree. I, I've always loved Phyrexian Arena. I think it's really good. Yeah, I, I don't know. I like it a lot. I I, I think s unless standard is like super super aggressive, like. But I mean, this it's funny because this goes well with one of the best cards in the format, which is Shieldred. Like, being able to play this and then play Shieldred, and then now you're gaining a life every time you draw a card off Phyrexian Arena. So you're gaining three life a turn and losing you you lose one, gain four every turn. Like that seems pretty good. Just for me, it's like you're saying in standard this is not good at all, chat. It's. I've played so much standard and it's literally mid range versus mid range. Even the mono white deck is mid range and cards like this just win you those games. There's a lot of cards in this set, including like the, 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 the Zenith card, like that make me, or the twilight card that make me think black mono black control could left definitely be a thing. Like in the late game, like if they kill your shoulder and you just like kill their best creature and get your shoulder back, like at instant speed. And then you draw a card with Phyrexian arena and gain three, like, I don't know. This this set seems really good for Mono Black. Yeah, this is really good. And then now we're obviously getting to the next card, which is another ridiculous Mono Black oh, card. Oh, this one I did know about. Yeah, this is exciting. Phyrexian Obliterator, it's four mana for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Horror. Whenever a source deals damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. This card's just cool. I mean, honestly, in my history of playing Phyrexian Obliterator, there's very few times where they sacrifice permanence. But the threat of this card, like the 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 legend of this card is so good that it doesn't even matter, right? Like Are you okay? I think we lost your sound. What? Oh no. Wait. What? I hear you now. Okay. But that I missed weird. I I saw the fingers and then I missed anything else. Oh, that's it. weird. I'm... Yeah, no, I said this is a card that like I feel like in my history playing Phyrexian Obliterator, I haven't gotten my opponents to sacrifice many permanents. Yeah. But even despite that, like the legend and threat of, of Phyrexian Obliterator is just so big. It looms so large that like, it doesn't matter. Right. Like it's answer immediately. And right. It, and exactly. It's specific removal. It needs to happen immediately or your opponent is amassing. And it cannot uh, be damage based removal. <laughs> Right. You're yeah, if you don't answer this immediately, then every turn after you can't employ your game and your opponent a lot is now allowed to, you know, right. employ their blocking sucks for you. It's not it's not great. It's not gonna work out yeah. well. Yeah. 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 This card's busted. It's very good. I mean, turn three Phyrexian Arena into turn four Phyrexian Obliterator. That's a that's a combo right there. Not really in the sense that they work together, but they're just two strong cards that I would not mind playing back to back. And that's a combo. <laughs> it's two it's two cards and they already exist in the format like in like cards like this where it's like all right well if my opponent plays the you know plays a fable the mirror breaker and the next turn they play uh then the next turn they play the shield Druid, it's like jesus christ it reminds me of like old abzan like when abzan ruled it's like do they always go two three four five and you're like yeah i can't they're always going like me. fleece main lion into anafenza into siege rhino and you're like all right cool all your creatures are five fives yeah, Got it's it. like, I can't come back from this. Yeah. Like, you just have to have, like, the perfect storm of, like, removal and ways to deal with these cards. Yeah. Ravenous Necro Titan. 6-6 six, six for 4. Uh, when, it, when it enters the battlefield, sack a creature unless an opponent has three or more poison counters. Mm, okay. I mean, sacrificing a might to get a 6-6, six, six, but then if they kill it, you're like, all right, well, it's a 2 for one me. This card seems really good and limited. Very good. It seems it seems fine. I would probably find a way to play this. I mean, it's a it's a six six for four. Like a six six is just good. Yeah, this is good. Oh, uh, is there an four. obliterator deck where you ping it a bunch? It that would not work because obliterator says that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. So if you ping your own obliterator, you are the one sacrificing. Yeah, that you don't want to do that. <laughs> Scheming Aspirant. Whenever you proliferate, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Yeah. 
if you get a couple of these in limited, like this is just a blowout. Like you, you can just yeah, take all the fair. proliferate cards because proliferating, like you don't have to choose any counters, right? If, if a card says then proliferate, if I choose no cards, no counters to double, like, am I still proliferating? That's a good question. I don't know that. Does proliferate mean a card told me to do it? Or does proliferate mean I, I took the action of putting an extra counter? I don't know. I, I think it would. I think it would trigger with nothing because I could see the interface would say select zero. Right. And I would select zero and I still did the act. I took the action of proliferating. My choice yeah. was just zero. I, I think yep. I think I agree with that. Shieldred's Edict. This card I, I really like. Uh, two mana for an instant. Choose one. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. Each opponent sacrifices a creature token. Or each opponent sacrifices a planeswalker. Another busted, think, another busted black card. The fact that it says non-token creature is so big because there agreed, are so many, because there's so many, so yep. many little tokens running around everywhere. And obviously, with the set, the mites and stuff, this card's dumb. Yeah, this is like I, I have sudden, um, sudden edict in my cube right now, which is like the, you know, sacrifice a creature. It has split second. This yeah. is so much better than that. Like split second is so rarely relevant, but yeah. like I, I'm immediately swapping it for this. Because especially like if they, they can have like a two two creature and like a Jace the Mind Sculptor, and you're never gonna get them to sacrifice the Jace the Mind Sculptor, but with this you just choose Planeswalker, and typically they're only gonna have one. Yeah. So a it's lot of fun. times this is just two mana instant speed planeswalker removal. You know what I mean? Like this this card is so good. Yep. Sometimes you can look at a card and you can tell how good it is. Um, and then like, you'll be rewarded because they'll make that card, the, the promo card, um, like the, what is it called? The play promo? The promo? The... Yeah. No, like the, whatever the, hold on. I'll just look it up. I forgot what they're called. Shield red. Shoulders edict. Uh, the promo pack card. That's what it is. Uh. And it's like the darker version of the text box and stuff. Uh, Shieldred's Head Cleaver, four mana for a two four with menace, toxic right. two. Oh yeah, good call. It does kill Merit Lage. That's a yeah, that's sweet. <laughs> I'll choose token creature, sacrifice one. Uh, menace toxic two two four. Yeah, this seems this seems great. I, this card, I'm actually surprised this isn't uncommon to be honest because it's know. it's the token uncommon. What? No, talking I'm talking about, about head... No, I'm talking about Shouldered's head cleaver. We've moved That's on, trash. Rob. Try to keep up. Absolutely. Stinging Hive Master. Three mana for a 3-2 with Toxic 1. When Stinging Hive Master dies, create a 1-1 one, one Phryxian Might token. Good and limited. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's a 3-2 for 3. It's got two abilities. Seems fine. Testament Bearer. Four mana for a 4-1. When it dies, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them in your hand, and the rest into the graveyard. I mean, this is a 4-1 for a Freud that draws you a card when it dies. That seems fine. It anticipates. Yeah. It's too expensive, though. The upfront cost it is, is too much. I agree. <clears throat> Vat Emergence. Five mana. Put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. From a graveyard onto the battlefield. That's interesting. And then proliferate. I feel like it's rare that they make standard cards that put cards from any graveyard into the battlefield. There's, there's a, they're few and far between, but they, 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 they exist. That seems rare. Like I feel like they try not to do that. There's one in standard right so now. What is it? Cruelty of Gix. Oh, the, uh, the saga. Yeah. Uh, Cruelty of Gix. Last yeah. mode. Put target creature card from a graveyard. Yeah. Good call. Good call. Yeah. All right. I mean, it's it's a random. It's your it's your typical five mana reanimate spell in the set. Like I don't yep. think it's better or worse than previous offerings in this. Uh, I I do think it's one of the best edicts ever. Yeah, for sure, Michael. Oh, easily, easily. Yeah, I, I think this the the modal selection on there is so specific that like I think you're frequently going to hit the creature or planeswalker that you want to hit. Uh, much more than previously. Vat of Rebirth, one black. Whenever another artifact creature you control is put into a graveyard from battlefield, put an oil counter on Vat of Rebirth. Remove four oil counters and return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. 
Eh, it's not any good. Four oil counters is just so much, dude. Plus three mana. Like, I've had to have four artifact or creatures die to use this one time, and it still cost me three mana. Like, this should be just tapped and remove four oil counters, if anything, because it's like I've already paid the, the iron price for this thing. I wish it had tap to add an oil counter to it. And it's only a sorcery? Like, activate is like, oh, God. It's just so yeah. much. It asks so much of me. Vran, Executioner Thane. Two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Whenever one or more other creatures you control die, each opponent le loses two life and you gain two life. This triggers once each turn. This is like Calastria Highborn, right? It's trash. Why did they limit it to once a turn? Calastria Highborn, whenever it or another vampire you control dies, you may pay a black. If you do, target player loses two and you gain two. It's a 2-2 two, two for black, black. It's very similar. This triggers once, but you don't have to pay anything for it. I don't know, like, how frequently are, like... It's not good enough. Like, even if they wrath the board when you have this out, like, it triggers once. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, I, I know, this is kind of... I don't know why. They, also, why does it say other creature? Like, this is a 2-2 two, two for 2. Like, it's a rare 2-2 two, two for 2. If they kill this, taking 2 and gaining 2 is, like, the bare minimum of what this should do. Yeah, that sucks. I don't know. That seems like it's only going to happen once. It only dies once. So like, it's not like it's going to overwhelm you. It's like, I think keep triggering or something. Vraska betrayals sting our second corrupted planeswalker for black Phyrexian black for a six loyalty planeswalker. She is completed. So you can either pay five mana and two life or six mana. Uh, you draw plus for a zero, you draw a card and you lose a life and you proliferate. So Phyrexian arena ability with a proliferate attached, which is, interesting because then that makes that, that makes this a plus one ability to be honest yeah negative two target creature becomes a treasure artifact with tap sack this artifact and one man of any color and loses all other card types and abilities so she's basically kind of, it's kind of negative two is kind of oko right yeah what did vraska relic seeker do uh i think this Desh it may it it, it destroyed an artifact creature. creature or enchantment, and then you made the token for negative three. Yep. This is you negative it. two. It can only target creatures, and they get a token. Or they, they, you know, the creature becomes a treasure, rather. And then negative nine, if target player has lower than nine poison counters, fewer, say fewer? Fewer than nine poison counters, get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. So if they have one poison counter, then they go to nine. They get eight. That's interesting. And they lose next turn because you can proliferate with this. Yes. If this is still alive. Yeah. yeah. Or like you can literally negative nine her when she's at nine, then play another Vraska and, and then win. zero her. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Really good. Would you say you don't think it's any good? No, even at five mana. Interesting. At five, I don't, I don't know because zero to draw a card and proliferate. It's not terrible. Negative two kills a creature, any creature. You know, I guess this is kind of like, you know, this, this is kind of like Obnixilis. Right. At five mana, she's a four loyalty planeswalker. Four is still fairly high. Yeah, five mana. You're right. Five mana, she pluses to five and draws you a card. That is pretty good, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I think even negative nine is kind of game winning. I don't think I don't think the nine is relevant. Um, I agree, I, again, but I, I don't think it has standard. to be right. Like, I think she has two abilities that are super relevant. One is draw a card, and it's plus one. The other is negative two, destroy any creature. Yeah. I yes, I, uh, I, I think this card's pretty good. Yeah, Chad said it's not. It's not bad. It's it's a support planeswalker that needs to be checked. It's not a game buster. Yeah, I agree. But like, if they have one creature. I mean, in like a mid-range mono black deck, it's like, you know, you've been removing their threats and yeah. then you untap five, pay five, minus it on their creature, and now you're drawing with a Planeswalker on board. It can definitely win right. games. It, and and I like it, the flexibility to play her as a five mana or a six mana Planeswalker is, is pretty good. Yeah, it, it it's good, actually. It's, it's good. It's playable. Again, like if Standard has any sort of mono black control deck, like this is, this feels like a, a solid inclusion. It has to now. I mean, with all the cards we've just seen, 
we we've almost made it. Think about think about what we've just seen. You literally could make a mono black yeah, deck yeah. from Phyrexian this Obliterator, set alone. Phyrexian Arena, uh, Children's Edict, and Vraska. So it's like okay, that's a good that's a good assortment. Like I think the black has definitely had the strongest constructed playable cards so far. Drown and Icker. I mean, you had Black Sun's Twilight. Black was. Just oh yeah, I ridiculous. forgot about that. Yeah, that's true. Jesus. Yeah, and this... Vraska's Fall. <laughs> this is like so sad to see Vraska's Fall like after we've seen Shielder's Edict. Uh, three mana for an instant. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker and gets a poison counter. Like this is just not on the same level. <laughs> no. Whisper of the Dross. One black. Target creature gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. And then proliferate. Oh, yeah. this is a miss. Like why couldn't this be a negative one, negative one counter? That does seem like a good... I think that was, this would have to be two mana because that's like traditionally what the negative one, negative one counter then proliferate is because then you're getting negative two, negative two forever. Yeah. But you could also just play Shieldred and when you ultimate her, you can just play Whisper of the Dross to proliferate. Yeah. Oh, and now we're done with the black cards. So now we're on the lands. Lands. And then, yeah, and that's the end. So, so I broke up the, the set reviews into two parts and... Um, make them even the the way they yeah the way they break down is uh white blue black lands and then white blue or red green artifacts and color and multicolor cards so let's do it all right the autonomous furnace the autonomous furnace enters the battlefield tapped tap to add a black or a red rather <laughs> one in a red sacrifice the autonomous furnace draw a card it is a, a sphere, sphere. <laughs> that's what I, yeah exactly what what is a sphere who hasn't been there am i right we will see i suppose i don't know i Let's like this land though yeah i mean yeah it just draws your card so i can draw a card sure if i'm black playing mono cliffs i'm sorry no it's okay go ahead i, I mean ahead. this is obviously this is obviously going to be a cycle right so if i'm playing mono yes. black like i'm jamming four of these in my black deck because i'm gonna get a draw oh later yeah game. yeah draw yeah jam your four spheres in your mono black deck it's a four sphere format. Indeed. It is Black a Cleave Cliffs, format. obviously a banger. One of the more expensive of the fast lands. You know, it's, it's, what, what do you want to say? It's great. It's great. Pioneer, Cop these are, these are big. Copperline Gorge, also great. Same reasons. Sticks, sticks, same thing. I don't know. Dark Slick Shores, my, my namesake card. And, uh, very good. Very good. Still good. Leave them black and blue. The Dross Pits. Here's the one Rob was excited about. This is the Rob Sphere. Play four of these in your mono black deck. They draw you a card. It's basically it's basically a Phyrexian Tower, right? You know, same thing. Can someone Photoshop me in the little goo in the in the shit down there? Yeah, put, put Rob in the goo in the shit. The Fair Basilica. Same thing. It's the it's the cycle. Comes into play tapped. You add a white. You sack it for to draw a card. It's it's all the same. Hunter Maze. Hunter's maze. He's all he's on the floor napping right now. Oh. Mirix. Here's a sphere that might do something. It's a rare sphere. Add a mana of any color. Activate only if Mirix entered the battlefield this turn. Okay, so the turn it comes into play, you get any color out of it. Three in a tap. Create a one one Phyrexian might artifact with toxic and this creature can't block. Okay, so that has nothing to do with spheres. This seems still good though, right? I like. Um, I would play this in mono black. You just—it's just a token. It's three mana and a tap. That's really cheap for a, you can't a land play that this makes tokens. Mono, you can't play this in mono black because it only taps for color the turn it comes into play. So how many? Like how many times do I need to cast a Phyrexian Obliterator? Once. Four. Mm, that's true. I still think actually you can. no, you're right. One. <laughs> Maybe how two. How many do I need, man? All right. I, I think this card's good. This card seems sweet. Like. A colorless land that makes a creature for three mana, like that's that's unheard of. Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I love me a good colorless <laughs> land that does stuff, so I, I like it. The monumental facade, another sphere. This has got to be the sphere that matters, right? The monumental enter, the monumental facade enters the battlefield with two oil counters on it. Tap to add a colorless. Remove an oil counter from the monumental facade. Put an oil counter on an artifact or creature you control. Okay, so still nothing to do with spheres. Still have no idea what's going on. 
Uh, uh, so this be... is basically just like move a, move an oil counter. Could be good, could be bad. Probably bad. Th- this does not seem rare to me. Am I crazy? Like two yeah, oil counters that you just get rare. to move? What? I haven't seen anything that makes this rare yet. No, this seems like an uncommon. I don't know. Like... Act, and you can only activate it as a sorcery. So it's not like I'm like, ooh, instant speeds, oil trickery, you know? Whatever. Can you imagine opening that in your draft pack? That's pretty shitty. I think in my draft pack it might be fine because I feel like there's a lot of oil synergies. I don't want to open it in my, like, the box I'm opening for constructed cards, though. <laughs> the Mycosynth Gardens. Okay, this is going to be the one that, 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 that sphere matters. Add Tap to add a colorless. One and a tap. Add one mana of any color. Okay, so it's already at a, at, a, at a premium. X and tap, it, ga- it becomes a copy of target non-token artifact you control with mana value X. So what? it's like a thespian stage for artifacts, right? That's stupid good. Like, so you can copy your your whatever. You can copy your lodestone golem for four and a tap. This is interesting. Okay, still don't know what spheres are. Okay. No, but th- there's got to be applications for this card. Oh, yeah, for sure. This seems good. This is an interesting one. In 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 older in in legacy, it becomes a retrofitter foundry. Yes, for one mana, for sure. For one mana. Yes. Interesting. Yes, I agree. This is a very interesting card. Oh my god! Wait a minute. Oh this, my god! This, I'm gonna in, wait a vi- in vintage, this becomes a black lotus for nothing. Oh, but you can't sack it. Why not? Well, because you tap it to, to make it a Black Lotus. The same turn. I mean, you can still sack it. I mean, that, you know, just don't, you, you can't do it the same turn, but you can still sack it. Interesting. Razor Verge Thicket, another classic, another banger. Love these guys. They're good people. Sea Chrome Coast. Perhaps you've heard of them. <laughs> another good one. Another good one. The White Blue Fast Land. The seed core. Okay, this is the one that this is the one that has spheres matter. Ready? Add one colorless. Okay. Add one mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to cast Phyrexian creature spells. Okay, interesting. Uh, corrupted. Tap. Add target one one creature gets plus two plus one until end of turn. Activate only if an opponent has three or more points. So it's basically a Pendle Haven for. If, if you have Corrupted, right? Like, plus two, plus one. Pendlehaven's like plus one, plus two, isn't it? Yeah. It's like a reverse Pendlehaven. But you... It's they have to be Corrupted. Still don't know what spheres are. Still no idea. I have no idea what a sphere is. So. Okay. I don't know. It, it is... Unless it's there's crap. a really... Yeah, it doesn't seem great. <laughs> it doesn't seem great. The Surgical Bay. Uh, this is the blue... Uh, sacrifice draw card card okay sounds good terramorphic expanse okay this is gonna be the one that 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 spheres matter sax terramorphic expanse search your library for a basic land card put it on the battlefield to, oh wow this doesn't this doesn't care about spheres either weird i wonder if spheres are like deserts if we get into green we're gonna see cards that let you search for lands that are spheres oh that's interesting what's next that's, all I that's it of. that's the end that's the end of the white, blue, black, and lands. I think black was easily the best color that we saw. Uh, close. I, I, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it was close. And uh, let us know what you guys liked. Let me know in the comments of the YouTube video what, what cards you guys are looking forward to. If you think we missed anything, if we got anything wrong, if we, uh, if we, if we overhyped anything, which I don't think we did. But yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know your favorite cards, your least favorite cards what you think about corrupted being redundant and uh stick around and we'll, we'll show you part two later so be sure to check that out subscribe and follow do the things check out hello fresh rob you got any final words i will see you next time he's good he's good radio personality guys we'll see you next time